Miami University on the campus of the Oxford campus here as we have the opening game for the Miami University Red Hawks and the Marshall Thundering Herd. I'm Kenny Scherlinger and to my right I have my color commentator Hans Justice and Hans this is a, a big game for Miami as uh, both both teams are very familiar with each other. They're for, former MAC rivals, and uh, Marshall got the win last year as Miami traveled to Huntington, West Virginia, and really had an unfortunate game outgaining uh, the Thundering Herd a lot, but this had a couple mishaps, and what do they need to do today to get a win and, and get off to the season to the start of a 1-0 a record? Yeah, um, so this is a great weekend here, homecoming weekend uh, for Miami University. Uh, for me, I think it's going to go on the play of Gus Raglan, our QB. Uh, with uh, Gus Raglan, he actually is 9-2 and two as a starter versus teams in the Mid-American Conference. Um, so when he doesn't actually throw a pick, Miami ends up winning. So I think their main focus will be if he can be accurate and get some, uh, get some TDs rolling, I think we can see a, a Red Hawk win. And uh, to start the game, Miami's going to kick it off and uh, have some questions on defense as they've lost a couple of players over – over due to uh, graduation with uh, Heath Harding and uh, Tony Reed in the secondary is going to be a question. So we'll see right off the bat how they handle those losses and who's going to step up for Miami and Coach Martin as uh, they're going to kick it away. And our familiar face, Sam Sloman from Atlanta, Georgia, is going to get the season started here in Oxford, Ohio. As we had a little bit of delay, getting a little bit of a late start, but scheduled to a 3.30 kick, and uh, we're getting started right around the 6 o'clock start here. So 6 o'clock right on the dot. Welcome back, everybody. This is high, this is uh, MAC football here as a non, non-conference game for Miami, and we're going to get the 2018 season started as Sam Sloman's going to kick it away. It's going to be a deep kick, and it's going to be fair cut, and by Marshall and they're going to take it over at the 25 yard line and Marshall really had a, comp- uh, a QB competition this uh, this fall camp and up until this point we don't know who's going to start so we're going to see who takes the field here for, for Marshall as they have two guys, a uh, grad transfer and a younger guy and both of them have not played any games at the Division 1 level so uh, we'll see who's going to take the field here. And it looks like it's going to be Isaiah Green. So a little bit of surprise, the redshirt freshman Isaiah Green's going to come in for his first snap of the 2018 season and the first snap of his college career as he's going to snap and is going to give a handoff right up the middle as he's gonna, there's nothing he's going to be doing there. That was Keon Davis with the carry. And uh, Hans, we're a, little, we're a little familiar with Keon Davis as he was the one who really burnt Miami last year. Yeah, for sure. Uh, actually, last year, his first play of the game off a kick return, he ran it back for a touchdown. So there's a lot to look out for this guy. Keon Davis is going to be on Green's left as Green's going to look at the line. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to be looking, looking back. He's going to go deep, and it's going to be overthrown, but there's going to be a flag on the play here. It looks like it's going to be a holding on the Red Hawks as DeAndre Montgomery for the Red Hawks was back there in coverage and might have held on to the Marshall wide receiver, number eight, Tyree Brady. So we're gonna look for the call here. And that matter of fact, it is gonna be holding on the Red Hawks and that's gonna give the Thundering Herd a first down. So fresh set of downs for Coach Doc Halliday who is 61 and 42 overall in his coaching career. The West Virginia grad, very familiar with the State of West Virginia, as you know that West Virginia University is a huge football school and Marshall is as well. As the snap's gonna go to Davis and Davis is gonna take the right side corner and break a couple tackles and get out right to the first down marker as we're gonna see what the spot is and it does look like they're gonna give him the first down. So Keon Davis picking up right where he left off with Miami as he uh, had a great game last year and really was the the MVP. So we'll see how Miami will contain him this year. Hopefully can keep him out of the end zone here as Green's going to give it off a fake handoff to to his running back, and it's going to be a complete pass to Obi 
Abello out of Coppel, Texas. And that's gonna be just short with the first down here. And uh, Hans, uh, Marshall looks to be moving the ball a little bit here to start the game. Marshall really likes this shotgun set with three wide as Green's going to have Davis to the right this time. And Green's going to take it up the middle and pick up a couple yards and get down to about the Miami 35-yard line. So Marshall looking pretty good here, driving early. And uh, the redshirt freshman doesn't look very um, squirrely. He looks, he looks pretty comfortable out there for his first game. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, I feel like that might be... Part of the reason why he's getting the start today with his dual threat uh, capability. Something that Miami has struggled a little bit in the past and see if they can keep contained as they didn't really there and uh, as Green got into the secondary and it's a pretty easy run for him. As Green's going to drop back, he's looking left and he overthrows his man. That was Obilo again, the intended wide receiver. going to bring up a second and 10 for the Marshall Thundering Herd at the 35-yard line of Miami. As Green's going to sit back at shotgun again with Davis to his left. He's going to fake the handoff. He's looking, throwing. He's got his man out to the first down. Touchdown Marshall. He's going to break a tackle. He's going to Get down inside the five yard line as Marshall pulls off a nice little out pass there and a couple broken tackles. Couldn't quite see who was on the reception there, but Marshall's gonna hurry up, try to get to the line quick and try to catch Miami off guard as they're down to the two yard line of Miami driving and looking to score and punch it in the end zone. As Green's gonna give a handoff to Green. Green's gonna go in a little bit to the end zone and it's going to be a touchdown as Marshall gets into the end zone the first play of the game and looking good pretty pretty good for Marshall good first start for for Green as he uh, gets in the end zone again once again as he um had the kickoff opening kickoff last year and opening touchdown this year yeah he seems to be uh taking uh taking back where he left off so not a not a great start for the Red Hawks but we'll see what they can do on offense um as the PAT is about to go as Justin Rollhauser is going to Set the kick, the PAT for Marshall. That's going to be up and good. So Marshall goes out to a 7-0 lead and really sets the tone for the game as Miami's really got to get it going quick or uh, they can fall behind here. And Marshall seem to travel very well today as they always do a very good crowd uh they travel very well usually and uh last time they were here in oxford they painted the jaeger stadium green it looks like they said did the same thing this year as the sun's starting to peek over the clouds here after the long rain, rain delay we had here in oxford Hodge, what do you think about that drive there? As, uh, they really seem to cut right through the Miami defense there. Uh, in that last drive, I just feel that uh, the Miami defense never really had themselves set. I know you talked about uh, key losses earlier, but we're bringing back eight starters on defense. So something I wish that I wish that we will see to change uh, in the next drive for the defense. Uh, having eight starters return, you feel like there'd be a sense of you know continuity in there. So they really just kind of got eight up. Hopefully, I'm just going to take it to first game jitters. Absolutely, as uh, they didn't really seem to create much resistance there for the redshirt freshman playing in his first game. His first try of the game ends up with a touchdown. He made a couple of good, couple of good throws and a couple of good runs, and Green really finished off the the drive there. And I also think Miami probably uh, we don't know for sure, but they could have been uh, thrown off with the QB decision, especially with. Um, uh, the QB uh, transfer, Alex Thompson, uh, a lot of us probably thought he was going to get the start, especially being a graduate transfer. So I don't know if we're going to see him thrown in at all or if they're going to just stick with the redshirt freshman and Isaiah Green. Absolutely. As we're going to wait for the kickoff here. A couple newcomers for the Miami defense. Number 14, Zedrick Raymond, who is a uh, junior college transfer who, was, who came from uh, – the same school that uh, the Netflix series um, 
What was the Netflix series? The called? Netflix series is Last Chance U. Last Chance U. So a little bit of a high profile junior college transfer for Miami as he's gotten the start here at cornerback, taking over for um, Heath Harding. Mm -hmm. Jalen Bester is going to be back for the Red Hawks to kick it off as uh, Marshall is getting ready to kick it off, setting up on the left side of the field. And that's going to sail over Bester's head and out of the end zone. So Miami will start at the 25-yard line. And here comes the very well-experienced Gus Raglan out of Cincinnati, Ohio, the, the leader of this team, no doubt. And uh, really trying to cement his his uh, history here at Miami as he's he's run into a couple injuries. He likes to get out there and run. And he's got banged up recently. But as uh, everybody knows, when Gus Raglan is healthy, Miami has a very good record, and we're going to see if he can start off the season the right way in this first drive as Raglan's going to start on the shotgun with Kenny Young to his right now. It's Young's going to go out for a swing pass. They're going to get it out to Young, but it's going to be – the play's going to be blown dead as it looks like there was a false start on the play. as Kenny Young is going to be, looks like he was going to go out, but they bring in a Alonzo, Alonzo Smith for Miami. And Miami really has an experienced backfield this year as Raglan's going to take the shotgun snap, look to the sideline, maybe a couple checks. He's going to snap the ball. It's going to be a give right up the middle to Alonzo Smith, and he's going to dance a little bit, but uh, get wrapped up and nothing doing there for the first play of the season for Miami is Alonzo Smith, the red shirt. Red shirt, fifth-year senior at a Riviera Beach, Florida, and Kenny Young out of Tallahassee, Florida, is a fifth-year senior as well. So lots of um, experience back there and two different backs. One is a speed and one's a power back, and Alonzo Smith can get out there and has some surprising speed as Raglan's going to take the shotgun snap with Alonzo Smith to his right. It's going to be a swing pass out to Kenny Young. Kenny Young's going to get out and break a couple tackles and pick up about seven, eight yards on the play as uh, it makes that third down a little bit more manageable. It's going to bring up a third and five at their own 30-yard line for Miami. And don't want to give the ball back to Marshall, especially as good as their offense looked early. So you got to be able to pick up this, this crucial third down and you know, we haven't called uh, James Gardner's name yet, so we'll see if they're going to go to him as he looks like he's in isolation there on the right side of the field. I wouldn't be surprised if they go to him. This Raglan's going to bring Kenny Young into motion. He's going to fake it off to Kenny Young, and he's going to get it out to Alfonso Smith, and he's going to be taken down, but it looks like he picked up the first down as Miami converts on that third down, so one for one on the third down conversions on the day. You know, it looks to see that we've gotten a lot of action from the backfield, which has been a lot of emphasis uh, in Miami's offense. It's exceedingly gone up since 2014, and last year uh, they rushed for 146 yards per game. Uh, and a lot of that can go back to the offensive line, which remain retained all five of their starters. Yeah, lots of movement back there. As Gus Raglan's going to drop back. He's looking, looking, throwing. He's got his tight ends going to be broken up by the Marshall defense as he had... Had his man, but pretty good coverage there for the Marshall secondary as that was knocked away. It was the first time we've seen Raglan really kind of go downfield a little bit here, so we'll see if he can do that. But it again hasn't went to Gardner yet, so maybe put him to sleep as Gardner has looked like he's actually the game. Raglan's going to bring a motion man. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle. It's going to get hit and go down in the backfield as nothing doing there for the Red Hawks. Jalen Bester on the carry there. So it's gonna bring up another third down for the Red Hawks. This time third and nine from their own 38. 10-11 to go in the game in the first quarter. 
as Raglan's going to, uh, the whole offense is going to look to the sideline, get a call. Raglan's going to snap the ball. He's looking, looking, throwing, and it looks like he wanted his man, and it looked like a lot of contact there. So it looked like Jack Sorensen was out there for Miami. So that's going to bring up fourth down. It's going to bring up Kyle Kramer to punt it away for the Red Hawks as they stall out. And Hans, that's not what you want if you're Coach Martin and the Red Hawks to start the season and, and start the game here as uh, you don't want to give it back to the dangerous offense of Marshall. Yeah, right now Marshall looks like they might have the hot hand. Um, but I wouldn't say it was a terrible drive for the Red Hawks. At least they didn't go three and out, getting that first down. Hopefully it might be something to build on for them. And that is punted away by Kramer. It's going to be fair caught at the 20-yard line. A pretty good punt there. Tyler King on the return there from Fort Meade, Florida. So lots of Floridians here, even though we're up in Ohio. So The real Miami, <laughs> as, I, as I like to say. So we're going to take a quick break. 7 nothing, Marshall. 9.50 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back. This is Red Hawk Radio. Welcome back to Jaeger Stadium as Marshall is going to break the huddle and break the come back out on the field. And Miami's going to go back on the defensive here as they're going to try to stop Marshall this time as they went right down the field. Easy as the redshirt freshman Isaiah Green. The surprise start as we really thought that Alex Thompson was going to get the start. Now um, the grad transfer from uh, what school did he go to, Hans? He went to Wagner. Or Wagner. Gotcha. So low-level guy looking to start but we might see a little bit of him today as the handoff's going to go off to King for Marshall and he's going to slip out and get about six yards so pretty good pickup on first down for Coach Holiday the Thundering Herd King's going to be the tailback for Green as he is off to his left and he's gonna send him in motion. He goes out for a swing pass, it's gonna be a screen pass and it's gonna be a first down for Marshall as that pass was completed to Tyree Brady. He's already got a couple, some action today. And Marshall does not break for a huddle so they're just gonna hurry it up and maybe wearing out that defense of Miami. It's definitely tough on the, the, the front four guys. Green's going to take back the shotgun. It's going to be complete out to the side. Pick up for about 
another six yards. The pass is completed to Obiato. Marshall's got pretty good stable of wide receivers and running backs. There's a lot of substitutions and getting everybody involved early here. We're going to have a three-man backfield for Marshall here. He's going to send King out into the flat, and he's going to come back. It's going to be a handoff to King. King's going to try to get the corner. He's going to cut it upfield, and he's going to get out to about the 50-yard line as a nice little misdirection there as uh, he went out to the flat, turned right back around. Looked like he was going to try to break it off outside, but found a hole, cut it up the middle of the field, and pretty good pickup. That's going to be another first down for Marshall as they're once again driving, knocking on the door of Miami's territory. Yeah, it seems that Marshall is able to have their way with Miami's defense today. So we got to see uh, what the coach is going to spring up for us. Screen's going to take another shotgun. There's going to be another motion. It's going to be a handoff to Keon Green right up the middle. He's going to pick up an easy four yards. So my uh, Marshall's really making it a priority to pick up good chunk of yards every every first down and it's really helped out their offense and open up the playbook for them as they're not strapped as uh, Mac Duffin, Brad Koenig and Junior McMillan are going to exit the game for Miami. Fresh set of legs for the defense. Second and seven from Miami's 48 yard line. Green's going to have another motion man. He's going to fade the handoff. He's going to drop back feeling a little bit of pressure. He's going to go deep and it's going to be overthrown again. And it looks like there's going to be a flag on the play as there was a little bit of a tie-up. Two flags come flying in. And it looks like it's going to be a pass interference on Miami and give Marshall a fresh set of first downs here. And uh, with a call of pass interference kind of in this uh, college game, sometimes I, I give it to the DB or the cornerback to make that move because in there you're going to give up 15 yards or you have a chance to give up a touchdown. So kind of at your discretion at that play. Yeah, and Marshall's uh, testing out that new secondary for Miami as they have a couple guys who are plugged in there. As Marshall's going to go to a little bit different set with another three-man backfield. It's going to be a handoff to King around the corner. He's going to cut it back in and almost get to the first down marker as he works his way inside the Miami 25-yard line. And driving again here for Marshall is a Look very good and really have the Miami defense reel in here. Yeah, sometimes you don't know what kind of team you're going to get after a delay. If they're going to be flat footed or if they're going to feel like they're going to be more energized after a break like that. And so far, we're seeing which team uh, is feeling a little bit more energized. Yeah, pregame warm-ups have seen Marshall came out a little bit more excited than Miami is. Green's going to go deep. He's got a man in the end zone. He's going to overthrow him. He really had his man out there as he beat his coverage and was breaking for the end zone. But that's going to bring up a third down. And Miami's going to try to force Marshall for a field goal. Is that going to bring a fresh set of legs? It looks like Dean Lemon's going to come in. Andrew, Andrew Sharp, Brad Kenning, and Junior McMullen are going to all come back in. Miami's going to go to a deep set. Four-man backfield here for Marshall. Late substitution for Miami. It's going to be a run up the middle. Looks like it's green. It looks like he's got it. And nothing doing there. It wasn't really touched until uh, he was past the first down marker. So easy pickup for the Thundering Herd as they're back in business with a fresh set of downs. Mac Duffin's going to Substitute in for Nate Trawick. Nate Trawick, the real new leader of this defense, the local kid from Richmond, Indiana, who's a great student athlete and got a lot of guys who look up to him. But Green's going to go have a check at the line, look at the sideline. Um, he's going to shift a little bit to the left and right. Show blitz. Green's going to look. He's going to look off and take off running and get tackled at about the 16 yard line. Nice little pick up there. It's gonna bring up second and five. As we're working our way down to the five minute mark of the first quarter. 
This quarter's went by pretty fast with Marshall. <laughs> Quick pace offense, Miami going. Not, not too far down the field, so Marshall knocking on the door again in the red zone. Let's see if they can convert. The screen's going to look. Take a check at the line. Green's going to drop back, feeling a little bit of pressure. He's going to scramble again, make a couple shakes. He's going to get out. He's going to pick up the first down and fall right out of bounds. As, uh, Felt the pressure right out the gate there and made a couple moves and Miami did have a lot of red shirts around him, just couldn't wrap him up. Screen's a little bit slippery out there for those defensive linemen. Yeah, slippery and shifty. As Sharp and Duffin are gonna exit the game and Cal Cagno and Treywick are gonna enter. Miami with four down linemen, showing a little bit of blitz. That's another check to the line. There's going to be a motion for Marshall. From right to left. Green's going to roll out. He's got a man. It's going to be complete. He's going to dive for the pylon, and they're going to say he's just about short. Obialo with a reception there as... Marshall once again right on the, the one yard line in Miami and Miami's really gonna have to find a way to get a stop here as it's second and goal for the thundering herd. Lots of running back and forth and some couple late substitutions for Miami. They don't seem they're on the same page. Another four man backfield for Green. It's gonna be a timeout on the field. This might be an official review. It was a little bit of a distance to see down there as that's the far end of the field for us and the far corner, but it might have been uh, pretty close. So they're definitely close enough for them to take a look at it. And no replay on the video board here. So our guess is as good as anybody's here. That's what we're going to just see as the referees are going to converse and check out the replay and see if they're going to give them a touchdown. If it does, that will uh, give Marshall 14 points, and they only scored 14 or er, seven points last year on offense, as the rest of them were from special teams and turnovers. So, good start for Doc Holliday and his team as they make the travel over here to Oxford, about a three and a half hour drive. And it looks like a lot of uh, Thundering Herd fans made that drive and. Wanted to come enjoy Oxford for the weekend, rightfully so. I mean, would they really be a thundering herd if they didn't come and travel? Yeah. Wouldn't be really living up to their nickname. Absolutely. And this game really has a lot of history, and as the referees converse and say that he did not break touchdown plane so that's going to bring up a second and goal for the thundering herd but yeah lots of history here is uh some marshall fans haven't forgot about 1971 meeting between the red hawks and, and oxford and the thundering herd after the tragic plane crash for marshall everybody's familiar with the we are marshall video or movie and as their 75 players died in the plane crash and Next year, Miami ended up winning 66-6, to as some Marshall fans thought that it was a little unnecessary to run up the score on a team that had some misfortune. Is it going to be a handoff? And you have to see a single, but it's going to be a touchdown for Marshall as uh, they punch it in once again. And that's going to put Miami in a 14-0 deficit pending the PAT. And not the start you want if you're Coach, Coach Chuck Martin for Miami as uh, Marshall's really come in here and set the tone for the game and, and uh, played quick and fast and got off the field on defense and 
have worked their way pretty easily down the field on the Miami defense, who last year was, wasn't too bad, but got to stiffen it up is that they returned a lot of starters, but lost some key guys with Tony Reed and, and Heath Harding and a couple other guys at graduation. So Miami's going to have to pick themselves up here and fight their way out of the hole here as the PAT is going to be attempted. Marshall, it's going to be up, and it's going to be good. So with 3.28 to go in the first quarter, Marshall jumps out to a 14-0 lead to start the Miami Red Hawks season, and uh, Gus Raglan and company are going to try to get on the scoreboard here coming up. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Jaeger Stadium as Marshall is getting set to kick off to the Red Hawks as they're going to try to answer Gus Raglan and count company haven't really got anything going and we haven't seen much of uh, their key player on offense, James James Gardner, as uh, the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has yet to get any action and has really been a key guy for the Miami offense for the last couple of years. So we'll see what happens. And Jalen Bester is back to receive for. Miami and it's going to sail over ahead over his head again and Miami's going to pick it up at the 25 yard line. And uh, with talks about James Gardner, uh, I wonder if we're going to see a more opened up playbook for Miami, especially when you're down 14-0. I don't know if you're going to see a lot more conservative play or if we're going to see them kind of stretch the field down and see uh, see some deep plays, see some uh, see a more opened up offense. Yeah, so I, I would I would look for Gardner to maybe uh, take a couple of shots downfield with him and maybe some other guys, but I always got to get in this game here as they could lose control quickly as Raglan's going to go back. He's going to look and go downfield to, you guessed it, James Gardner. He's going to pick up the first down and uh, nice pickup on first down there for the Red Hawks. And like we said, you got to go to your guy when you're in trouble. You got to you got to get the ball to your best playmaker on the field, and that's definitely James Gardner. So. Miami back in business this is going to be a swing pass. It's going to be fumbled but picked up. Looks like Jalen Bester was on that swing pass and uh, recovered the ball, but Miami's going to lose about five yards on that play. So not what you wanted after a positive play and getting downfield. It's 
Braglin's going to look to the, the sideline. He's got a lot. Smith to his left. He's going to bring around Vester and keep it. And nothing going there as he gets taken down in the backfield. So Miami is stalled out after the first play of the series. Getting him to pick on the first down. It's going to bring up a third and 15 for the Red Hawks at the Miami at their own 35-yard line. Raglan's got Kenny Young to his left in the shotgun. A little bit of a false count there. It looks like Marshall might have jumped, but no flag on the play. Raglan's going to take it. He's going to step back. He's going to chase. He's just going to throw it away. And it looks like he gets hit in the backfield, and it looks like the Miami sideline was looking for a rough in the passer play, but they're not or penalty there, but they're not going to get it, and that's going to bring up fourth down as Miami is in – some deep trouble here as they're going to kick it away as Kyle Kramer and the kicking unit are going to try their best to uh, pin Marshall and their high power offense back as far as they can. And on that previous play, Gus did not look to have any time to throw. And with the veteran um, uh, offensive line we have there, we'd like to see a little bit more time for him on that one. As that kick's going to be taken by King, and he's going to go right down as great coverage there for the Red Hawks says that tackle was made by Darius Thompson, the nickelback, making some plays on special teams as he got right down on the field and sitting on that tackle, wrapped him up, and a little bit of a positive note for Miami as they really need to get a turnover here or just, just, just outright stop uh, Marshall as uh, they seem to show no match for the Thundering Herd offense here as uh, Isaiah Green in his first two possessions of his college career went right down the field. He's looked really good. This Green's going to give the handoff to Keon Green. Davis, rather, and he's going to go right up the middle and get tackled, but he's going to pick up the first down, a gain of about 12 on the play. And it uh, looks like uh, a trend has been changed between these two teams. Last time they met, Marshall wasn't really being able to move around the field, and right now Miami's looking a little conservative. We're going to get another handoff to Davis as he's going to get wrapped up and still slip away for about five, six yards as they're back in business, working their way towards Miami territory once again. you got to believe the Miami defense is uh, getting a little bit winded out there as their offense hasn't provided much of a break for them with the short time of possession for Miami. This is going to be taken out by Green. He's looking. He's got a man right in the middle of the field. He's going to get up in the middle and get brought down to the 35-yard line. So nice pitch and catch there from Green. And on the reception there is Marcel Williams. First time we've called his name this uh, late afternoon, evening. The junior from Palm Coast, Florida, which is right in my neck of the woods down in Florida. Screen's gonna bring over Williams again. They're gonna be fake a handoff to Davis and Davis is gonna go right up the middle and get a couple more yards down to about the 30 yard line for Marshall as the clock is going to tick down to the 20 second mark and we might not see another snap here as the Marshall sidelines is going to call all their players in and we're going to switch fields here as the clock is going to run down and the fateful of the Thundering Herd are going to stand up and give their offense and their team a round of applause rightfully so as they have not wavered at all and uh, looked very strong, and Miami's reeling a little bit here. As, uh, it's not the best start of the season uh, for Miami, so hopefully that quarter was not um, foreshadowing for what is to come for the rest of this game, and Miami can pick themselves up and 
try to get back in this game. So we're going to take a quick break and take a media timeout. We'll be back in about two minutes. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. Welcome back to Red Hawk Radio for the broadcast of the Miami Red Hawks and the Marshall Thundering Herd. I'm Kenny Scherlinger and Hans Just Justy so, uh, to the right of me as uh, Miami has uh, got some work to do for the rest of the game here as they've dug themselves in quite a hole, 14-0, as we're going to pick up the start of the second quarter. And uh, Marshall yet again driving trying to punch it out to a 21-0 lead or three possession game here. And uh, the storyline today has really been the high-powered offense of, of Marshall and their redshirt freshman quarterback Isaiah Green who has not looked like a freshman today and does not look like somebody who's playing his first college career game. So we'll see what's going to happen here is it's going to be a second and six from the miami 31 yard line for green as he's going to drop back he's looking looking he's got a man deep it's going to be deflected away as there was a little bit of pushing and shoving there but no flag on the play and tyree brady was the attended receiver there for the thundering herd it's going to bring up a third down and Miami really hasn't been able to uh, get off the field here as Marshall has 11 first downs on the day already compared to Miami's two. So third and six for Green, and it's, we're going to get a timeout. It looks like it's going to be from the Coach Martin sideline as he didn't look like he was very pleased with the formation there. So Miami's going to talk it over and try to get off the field here and at least force Marshall to a field goal, even though it would be a three-possession game. You don't want to go down 21 zips, 17 zips, a little bit more manageable. So, no, I definitely agree with that, especially in a third and six situation. I feel like this getting a stop here definitely is going to give the defense a little bit of hope and a little bit of light. Uh, going down 21-0, I don't know if you've ever played Madden, but that's a skunk. So mm. seeing that, I don't. Don't want a little bit of deflated players out there, so just a little bit of hope in there. Out 
as Marshall's going to have four wideouts here. Three to the left of Green, one to his right. Might be looking at isolation here as they get a hard count and no flag. Marshall's going to air it out deep. It's going to go wide left there, and uh, there's going to be a flag on the play, and it might be offsides here, but it looks like they might have a block in the back, possibly, holding on Marshall. That is going to be a holding on Marshall. It's going to be a decline. It's going to bring up a fourth down. You know, in situations like that, do you ever feel it pretty difficult to decide whether you're going to accept the penalty or decline it? Yes. And now they're going to show fourth down on the scoreboard, but Marshall's going to go for it anyway as they're going to have three wideouts here for Green. Maybe get a hard count as they almost got Miami to jump first time. So we'll see what they'll do as Green's going to step back. And it looks like it's going to be a pooch punt and he's going to try to cough in corner in the middle of the field here. It's going to roll down and Marshall's going to bat it away and looks like they're going to down it inside the five yard line. So not something you see every day in the modern game of football. So uh a little pooch punt from Green uh, works out successfully for Marshall, and uh, they get it and pin down the Red Hawks inside their own five-yard line. So that's where Gus Ragland and company is going to pick it up, and uh, not a good sign for the Red Hawks, but they did stop them. It was their first yeah. stop of the game and uh, prevented Marshall from scoring again for the first time as they were – Two for two on their possessions for the day. Two for two for touchdowns. And a little bit of opposite of uh, what there was last year as Miami looked to move the ball, outgaining Marshall by just about 200 yards. But uh, Miami had a little bit of trouble with containing Keon Davis on the kickoffs there as he returned a 99-yarder and a 98-yarder on the kickoffs. So see if Miami can convert and take advantage of that stop they just got from their uh, defense. And I have two observations from that punt. My first one is they clearly don't trust their kicker. Um, I don't know how far that kick would have been, but it would have been between 40 yards or so, which is, I guess, normal in a college uh, situation. But my second observation is I think they can only do a punt like that because they've been marching down the field so much. I think Miami thought, well, we have to threat them. It's definitely a threat, even though they're going in a fourth and long situation. So very rare to see something like that. But uh, I, I kind of tip uh, to their coaching staff that they were able to have guts to be able to pin them within ten in the 10-yard line. So it's interesting. I've never seen that live before. But it really only works because they've been, you know, really moving moving down the field on the Red Hawks. Yeah, and I mean, Green came up to the line looking like he was going to snap. And then he came up to the line and made a call. and. Uh, stepped back more than usual on the shotgun and it kind of looked like he was going to kick it away and haven't seen that and, and like you're right I have not seen that live before but that's good execution by Marshall as they uh, almost the ball almost slipped into the end zone and was a touchback which really would have been only a difference of about five yards for for Marshall as they were on the 31 yard line and six yards so it worked out for them as they got down the field quick and batted it out of the, make sure it didn't cross the, the the plane of the end zone and that's where Miami's going to pick it up. And Both. Miami has to move down the field and make them pay for that decision because if they do not get a first down or two then they're just going to give them a short field situation which is what Marshall wants out of that. So here we go. Ragland's right in the shadow of his goal post with Kenny Young to his left. A little bit of a hard count. It's going to be a handoff to Young. He's going to Get up the field a little bit, out for a gain about three yards. It's going to bring up a second and seven for Miami. As James Gardner's going to enter the game once again. Kenny Young's going to go out. Ryan Becker's going to, Nate Becker's going to come out for Miami as they're going to break the huddle. 
three wide out for Miami with Alonzo Smith. A little bit of motion, fake handoff. Ragland's going to go back and throw to James Gardner, and he's got him right at the 20-yard line. And a nice little pickup there is uh, Gus Ragland and James Gardner are two for two on the day as he's targeting them two times today and got nice pickups. So see if they can get more of that going because really – haven't much has had the Miami offense hasn't had much going besides those two plays to James Gardner here. So we'll see if that be repeated here as Raglin's gonna take the snap. He's gonna drop back, looking for Gardner again. It's gonna be just thrown to the sideline as it might have slipped out of uh, Raglin's hands as he was rearing back to throw that pass, looking for. James Gardner. And, uh, having a receiver of James Gardner really being a senior in his build of 6'4", it's really a real good gift uh, for a quarterback like Gus Ragland. So we're hoping to see if that connection can go further like you've been saying because that's really the only real offense we've been seeing today for, for our Red Hawks. So Ragland's going to go back in the shotgun. We haven't seen a snap from under center for both offenses today. So we'll see what – which is a, it's a pretty good trend here in the college game now. As it's gonna be handoff to Alonzo Smith, he's gonna break a couple tackles and get out to about the 28 yard line as they pick up a, some much needed yards there. And that's gonna bring up third down and two. So we hit the 13 minute mark of the second quarter for Miami and really gotta pick up this this, uh, draw, uh, this this first down here, if you're Miami, you don't want to punt it away here as they want to at least flip the field position a little bit here. As Ragland's going to have a man in motion. It's going to be handoff to Kenny Young, and he's going to slip out, break a couple tackles, and it looks like they're going to give him the first down as forward progress gets him out to the 31-yard line. So pretty good pickup there for Kenny Young. The speed side of the Miami running back combo with Smith and and Kenny Young, Thunder and Lightning as they like to call themselves. Alonzo Smith's going to be the right of Raglan. Raglan's going to drop back, looking, throwing. He's got a man. It's Gardner. He's going to go up for the pass, but it's going to be knocked away. So great coverage there in the secondary as Tyler King was there to knock it away for the thundering herd. Honestly, I feel like there's great coverage on both ends. I feel like it wasn't a greatly thrown ball, and Gardner kind of got in the way to make sure that was not picked off. Absolutely. Is, uh, he had one-on-one -on -one coverage, but Gardner was able, not able to split this. Um, get away from King as Bester's going to bring it around, and it's going to be a reverse handoff to Alonzo Smith, who's going to get out, break a couple tackles, and get out to about midfield as he – Got out of the first line of the defense for Marshall, slipped out, broke a couple more tackles, and stumbles right down to about the 49-yard line as Miami is looking to get their way into Marshall territory, which is something they have yet to do today. So first down with about 11.50 to go in the game, or not in the game, <laughs> in the second quarter. Miami would be a little bit of trouble if it was uh, 11 minutes ago in the game, how 14-0, but Ragland's going to take back the pass. Marshall's bringing a little bit of pressure, and Ragland's just going to throw that away as he didn't have much time there. As Marshall brought the heat there. Uh, but throwing the ball away was definitely wise. Uh, you can see his uh, veteran leadership in that. He barely had any time to throw that ball away, so he definitely got a nice pop on that one in a – a lot of a lot of on this offensive line play that we're really really shocked on is the crowd does not like the call. I think they're wanting intentional grounding of some sort. Yeah, I mean uh, it was a a little bit of a debate there if he was inside the tackle boxes or not, but nobody was in the vicinity there. But it was it was a, it was a tough call. But refs decided not to uh, for the ball ways. So we're gonna get a swing handoff to Kenny Young. He's gonna try to break the corner, but he's gonna get taken down by OB of it's going to be taken down by Jalen McLean Sapp there 
as Alonzo Smith is going to enter the game as Kenny Young is going to stay in and looks to line up in the slot position. So three wide on the left side for Raglan. Alonzo Smith to his left. They're going to look to the sideline for an offensive audible. Raglan's going to step back. He's looking to his left, feeling the pressure. He's got Gardner over the middle. And it's going to be complete and another first down for Miami. So, I mean, you're on third down for Miami, and uh, you got to go to Gardner as he's really been the only one he's been able to consistently pick up first downs for the Red Hawks as they're going to get into Marshall territory the first time today at the 38-yard line. So Miami get putting together a little bit of drive here. We'd love to see if they can get seven here. Get Gardner to Raglan's left. A little bit shift for Nate Becker. He's going to go right back to where he was. It's going to be a fake handoff to Smith. Raglan's going to roll out, and he's just going to throw that away. Looking for Luke Mayock over there, who could be targeted the first time today. Jack Sorensen's going to line up wide right there with Mayock on the bottom of the field. Maurice Thomas in the slot. It's going to be a handoff to Jalen Vester up the middle. He's going to pick up a couple yards there as he slips inside the 35-yard line. It's going to bring up another third down for the Red Hawks as we get inside the 10-minute mark of the second quarter. So do or die here for your... Coach Martin and the Red Hawks as they really need to pick up this first down. And what do you think they're going to go to here, uh, Hans? Uh, go to here? I mean, we, what we've seen uh, most of this drive, like you said, is James Gardner is what I'd hope. Uh, I know they like to put a lot of emphasis on the running game, but a third and long situation, I'm hoping for uh, uh, James, James Gardner. Spraglin's going to bring a motion in the mat. Look and tuck it and run, and he's going to get down to about the 30-yard line, but that's going to be short at the line again. It's going to bring up about a fourth and two, so decision time for Coach Barton here as he looks to keep the offense on the field. He's going to bring in Alonzo Smith, the power back, and it might be a run up the middle here, just going to try to bully themselves, bully Marshall try to pick up this first down, but we'll see what happens as Gardner's going to be lined up to the right, Kenny Young in the slot. Raglan's going to line up in the shotgun with Lonzo Smith to the right of him as this crowd comes a little bit alive. Young's going to be come around. It's going to be a give to Lonzo Smith, and that's going to be close. He's going to see where they're going to spot him. The Marshall sideline thinks that he's going to be just short. And he did pick up, looks like about two yards, but it's going to be very close as both ties are pointing their respective ways. And they're going to bring up a turnover on downs as uh, that does not work out for Miami as he looked to be really close there. And we might get an official review, but the refs seem pretty confident there without a measurement that he was short of the first down marker. So the, Mi the Miami drive stalls out as that was the first time they've shown that they could really move the ball today and really needed that. but. Took a gamble and uh, came up short there as uh, Isaiah Green and the Marshall offense is going to take the field again with about 8.44 to go. And I'm not too shocked with that outcome. I know that the, the run game is a lot of emphasis in this Miami's team, but for on that third and seven situation, I feel like that was the wrong call. Uh, and especially to go fourth and two, I don't think it was that much of a gamble. I don't think they were going to kick the field goal attempt there. Uh, so they thought it ball around the 30-yard line for Marshall if they miss it. Uh, but really... Uh, especially when you're down 14-0, you don't want to see a lot of conservative play. So we'll see if they'll flip the switch, if they can get a stop here soon and before they lose this game too early. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break here before this drive starts for Marshall. You're listening to the Red Hawk Radio, 14-0, Marshalling Thundering Herd with 8.44 to go. We'll be right back.
Here we go. Welcome back to Jaeger Stadium as the Marshalling Thunder Herd is going to take over once again and bring on their high-powered offense, who Miami has not had quite of an answer for them today as they've only got up, got one start and uh, or one stop today, and they were also pinned back to their five-yard line. But it looked like they could move the ball a little bit as that pass is going to be complete out to Tyree Brady. He's going to be... A couple yards short of the first down. It's going to bring out a second and three for Marshall. So, I mean, you really just want to get on the board here for Miami as they did kick it away to start the game. So they do get the ball out at halftime. But you definitely got to get a stop here and keep this within a two-possession game because if you can if you can punch it in here late into this first half and, and possibly – get the ball and go down the field and tie the game up and get right back into the game or I mean at least get within one possession here but it's going to be hard to do as there's going to be a flag on the field and it's going to walk Marshall back and it looks like there's a hold on the play it's going to bring up a second and 13 at their own 26 yard line Green's going to have Davis to his right. He's going to drop back, throw, step up in the pocket, looking, looking, looking. Got nobody. He's got a man, and it's going to be complete. About a five-yard gain on the play. That catch looked to be made by Xavier Gaines, I believe. The tight end out of Frostproof, Florida. So Green's going to have a third and six to deal with here. He's got four wide receivers out. He's got three to his right. Davis to his left. He's got a man split out wide to his left as well. He's going to make a check at the line. He's going to snap it. A little bit of pressure coming from Miami. The ball's going to be... Overthrown as Miami does get off the field. No flags on the play. And you got to be happy with that stop there as that was the first three and out for Miami of the of the young season here as their defense comes up big and gives it back to the offense as Kenny Young's going to step back and return this punt. And uh, you always know that Kenny Young is a very slippery, lateral-moving guy who uh, can get out in open space and and make some guys look a little bit silly as he's very shifty. Very shifty. Very shifty. So we'll see if they can he can get a, repur a returningable punt here as Lefevre is going to punt it away for Marshall. It's the first time we've seen Lefevre tonight as he's going to move to the right. He's going to kick it away, and Kenny Young's going to fair catch at about the 24-yard line. So that's where Miami's going to pick it up with 6.59 to go in the second quarter. We're going to stay with you and uh, talk it over as Miami is going to huddle it up on the sideline and try to answer Marshall finally as they haven't had quite of an answer at all. But that last drive looked looked on the upside for Coach Martin and his squad. So we'll see what they can do here. Yeah, Miami definitely looked to show some life on that defensive drive last time, especially like we, we you noted that it was their first three and out. Definitely with uh, that penalty help, help give them some, some space on that. But uh, hopefully that can move on to the offense and we can see a little bit more. I mean, last drive was pretty good for the Red Hawks. Um, I don't know if we're going to see them pass heavy, if we're going to see a combination with the running game, that which they love. Um, I don't know what you can speculate or what we're going to see out on this drive. Yeah, I mean, they've had a lot of success with uh, James Gardner, rightfully so, as they, when Gus Raglan and James Gardner are healthy, they've always been able to connect very well. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I, the one thing that I've looked at, noticed today, is Miami's run game has been a lot of, um, a lot of movement in the backfield and maybe a little bit too complex, and a lot of, a lot of those, those run plays that they've been running have have taken a little bit of time to develop. So maybe maybe dumb it down a little bit and just quick little handoffs and try to get downfield quick for your speedy guys 
uh, Kenny Young and Jalen Bester, and then Alonzo Smith does have a little bit of open, a little bit of speed, surprising speed, but he can also break some tackles and run some people over. But I, I would like to see Miami establish a little bit more of a run game. It, it, what would you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I agree. A lot of what you said has been a little complex, and I think I feel like they've been a little bit inspired by the other side of the field because a lot of the runs we've seen uh, with Keon Davis, they've been pretty complex. They've been uh, – uh, we've seen it even an end around before. Uh, so I think Miami, not to get in a competing battle with that, maybe a little bit of just up the middle runs with Alonzo Smith and letting Kenny Young dance around in the backfield a little bit. But uh, when you go east to west a lot of times, you're not getting that that north and south movement that you really want. So uh, sometimes it can look really pretty, but it's not going to get you a lot of gains in the yardage. Yeah, and a lot of play action and play action passes for, for Miami. And when you don't have that running game going, it's it's tough to have that defense and that front seven to really bite on it. And they've really just seen the tee off on um, Miami's offensive line. And Raglan and Raglan has at times looked a little bit uncomfortable as he's got some guys breathing down his neck as he's stepping back to pass as he's going to look to the sideline and the shotgun set with Kenny Young to his right. Make a little check at the line. We'll see what they have here with four out wide for Raglan. It's going to be a handoff to Kenny Young right up the middle. Kenny Young's going to get out and break a couple tackles and pick up the first down as uh, Kenny Young just kept on keeping those lights moving and slipping off those tackles. And first first down for him tonight. And it looks like uh, we're getting a little bit more simplicity that you were asking for. So just right up the middle on there, a little, little bit of shiftiness. Yep, as Raglan's going to drop back. He's got his man, Nate Becker, right over the middle of the field. He's going to catch it and go right down into Marshall territory at the 40-yard line. And he uh, ran over a couple Marshall players as he's got one of the Marshall defenders shaken up there as he's going to have the trainers come out to evaluate him. That's Nizi Johnson for the safety, Marsh the safety for Marshall as he's shaken up a little bit. And... Nate Becker's a big guy, so yeah, I was about to say that. I'm not too surprised. If you got a big guy like that blow into you, it's you're definitely gonna feel a little impact. Absolutely. Uh, but this does look like something to build on for Miami. First time we got back to back first downs. Um, so definitely it looks well, sorry. Oh, you're all good. As Raglan's gonna look to the line again. So gonna get a little call from the sideline as His single callers are going to give him a call. Raglan's going to just feel the pressure and throw it away on the sideline. And uh, the Marshall fans to our right down here are looking for another intentional grounding. But I guess they're going to say that it is an intentional grounding. Very late flag there as there was some arguing and some conversing. And the Raglan had a guy right down his neck right off the bat. And had nothing really to do there but throw it away and tried his best to try to get it out in a vicinity of uh, one of his receivers but wasn't able to do that so it's tough, always tough situation there mm -hmm. it's always going to be in a quarterback's instinct to kind of throw that ball away he had so much pressure on him that guy was right at his feet already probably didn't get a good look on what receivers were near him yep so Miami's going to have a First down and 25. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle to Smith, and he's going to pick up about a yard and a half. As we're going to get inside the six minute mark here for the second quarter. And the scoreboard looks a little bit confused there as they still have first and 10 up there. But there they go with a third and 16. Oh, how the fortunes have changed for Miami. As Miami's really got to, their work cut out for this third down. Raglan's going to drop back, get a little screen pass out to Young. Young's going to cut up the field, try to break a couple tackles, and go down about five yards short of the marker. And decision time again for Miami. And it doesn't look like they're going to concede to the special teams unit, and they're going to look like they're going to go for it again with fourth and five to go at the 35-yard line. Maybe a little hard count going as Marshall's substituting in and out of their defense. Raglan's got four men out wide. Decker's going to shift right inside the tackle spot as he's looking to the sideline. 
Becker's going to shift right back out to the slot again. He's got Jack Swanson wide left. It's going to be a fake handoff to Young. Young's going to pick up the blocker and it's going to be complete out to Luke Mayock as he's going to toe tap and get those toes right down. And that's going to be a first down as Raglan sat back in the pocket and Kenny Young picked up a nice little block there to give Raglan some time as he had a lot of blitzers coming at him and uh, Miami picking up the clutch third down to keep the drive alive with four and a half minutes to go as we're getting right down inside of this first half as this has been a quick half for yes, both teams. Yes, indeed. And that was a very clutch fourth, fourth down, as you mentioned. And the handoff's going to go off to Lonzo Smith. He's going to make a couple moves and pick up a, about a four yards on the play. So a nice little pick up to bring up second and six at their, the Marshall 21 yard line. 14 to zero Marshall as they've got out to the fast start, but Miami has seemed to come alive a little bit on offense and have picked up a couple stops on, on defense and kind of settled in. So, I mean, a little bit of a rust and it looked like Marshall was, was a little bit more ready to play right out the gate, but a little bit in the last 10 or so minutes, it looks like Marshall and Miami have been playing on an even playing field as Raglan's gonna drop back. It's gonna be a dead ball whistle. We'll see what we got here. I don't see any flags. Might have a delay a game or a timeout. Let's we'll see what the call is. And it looks like we're gonna get a false start on Miami and that's gonna go against Cam Turner. Or correction, Jordan Rigged, offensive lineman, fifth year senior at a Springboro, Ohio. 6'4", 302 pounds, it's a little bit bigger than your average offensive lineman in the <laughs> MAC, And that's going to bring up a second 11 for Ragland. Ragland's going to send Kenny Young off to the slot. He's got five wide. He's going to look, throw. Looks like he's got Mayock again at the 20-yard line. He's going to go down about the 21-yard line, and that's going to be a good chunk for Ragland in the offense as they're going to, it's going to bring up a third and four from their ninth from the Marshall 19 yard line as the clock is going to tick inside three minutes. Miami's driving here a little bit as they're going to go to a little bit of a tighter package here with Raglan taking the shotgun snap. Look to the side. He's got Kenny Young to his right. He's going to look for Young. He's going to get it out to him. It's going to be batted away as uh, Raglan was feeling a little bit of a pressure and it looked like that was batted away by Ty Tyler, the nose tackle for Marshall as he got in there quick and got his big paws up and knocked it out as he did have Young out in the flat, but that's gonna bring up a fourth and four. And Miami, you guessed it's gonna go for it and try to pick up another fourth down. Yeah, another tough situation for our Red Hawks here with, with another fourth down situation. With all the, the field they've moved so far, we'll see what they can bring. So Raglan's going to have Kenny Young out to his right. He's going to be a fake handoff. Raglan's looking. He's got his man complete. First down, touchdown, Redhawks. That's Jack Sorensen as Miami finally punches it in as Raglan had a quick fake to Kenny Young and had his man, Jack Sorensen, right over the middle for the easy touchdown as he was in no man's land, turned upfield, and was in the end zone. Wasn't even touched on that play. So great answer for Miami as they punch it in for the first time in the 2008 season. Yeah, great, great response, as you mentioned. And uh, especially from the beginning of that play, uh, I didn't see a lot out of it with Gruss really uh, scrambling out there, finding that big hole uh, for their receiver and uh, walks right in. Sam Sloman's going to come out from the PAT, and he's going to punch it right through, and Miami answers. So 14-7. to seven. Marshall Thundering Herd still on top, but Miami coming a little bit of alive, and uh, maybe that rain delay affected them. Expecting to start at 3.30 kind of messes up your clock, and then you get the kickoff at 6. So it took a little bit for Miami to maybe they were uh, napping a little bit in the in the, in the, the football facility, and it uh, took a little bit of time for them to get going. But um, nevertheless, they did get it going, and uh, that's going to put Miami right back into the game, one possession game here with 2.32 to go in the first half. So Hans, what do you think that about Miami maybe getting another stop here and getting the ball back and maybe getting a quick field goal right before half? Uh, 
the looks on that. Uh, from, from the previous uh, defensive drive we've seen before, I think definitely there's a chance on that. Um, but I think their expectation should be uh, not to let them score at the end of this half, especially off of that. They had two fourth down conversions from long. Uh, that was a long drive they just had, so I think just getting that scoring play to get it to seven, to be down just seven, is definitely something to look forward to. So if they can bring it to the half at 14-7 or maybe get closer, like 14-10, like you said, would definitely be a definitely a moral win for them. Absolutely. As Sam Sloman's going to take the field again, he's going to kick it away. Back deep is King and Davis, the dangerous. Davis is going to let that kick go right over his head, and that's going to give Marshall the opportunity to pick up the sticks at the 25-yard line of their own 25-yard line. And for Marshall, you, you want to get the momentum back as uh, the momentum has really shifted towards Miami's way with Miami punching it in with that connection from Raglan to Sorensen. But if you're Miami, you want to get a quick stop with 2.32 to go. If you get a quick stop, maybe use your timeouts the right way. Maybe you can have at least a minute to go with with your offense on the field, maybe in some good field position. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting to see as Green's going to take the field again. He's got his man to his left. Shotgun, he's going to drop back. He's looking to the left. He's got his man. It's going to be incomplete. That is Tyree Brady as the intended, uh, intended receiver for Isaiah Green. So good coverage there for the Red Hawk defense. Miami's going to stack the box with seven men in the box. They're going to creep up a little bit. It's going to be a run out to Davis. He's going to try to get the corner and not hit it. And a big hit there by Darius Thompson for Miami is He's going to get pick up the first down, but uh, Darius Thompson really um, letting them know that uh, his presence known as he's uh, starting for the first time in his career. Yeah, that's one of those hits that you will remember the night, <laughs> uh, tonight and tomorrow, because he had to try to hit him with a little spin move on there. He's letting him know you can't do that. So that's going to be a first and 10 for Marshall. Green's going to drop back. He's going to scramble. He's going to get hit, and he's going to go down in the backfield. So Miami... Gets the first sack of the game and of the season. And a handful of uh, red shirts were around him. Looks like Dean Lemon was in on that play. And as we look at the replay, we'll get who actually made it that tackle. It does look like it was Lemon I mean, as the ball's going to be snapped by Green. Green's going to keep it. He's going to break out and pick up a good amount of yards, and he's going to get down right to the thir first down marker as he gets down to about the 44-yard line. Junior McMullen on the tackle there. And we're going to get a timeout with a minute 14 to go. Yeah, I mean, Junior, we, we talked a little bit about Raglan having some health issues and, and James Gardner not being able to play as many games as he would like over his career here in Oxford. But Junior McMullen was another one that ended up breaking his foot in the middle of the season last year and that really hurt the Red Hawks as he's really the quarterback of the defense for Coach Martin and his team. So... Good to have him back and healthy, and he looks good today and just making that tackle there. So third and one two for the Marshall Thundering Herd as Green's going to have the clap snap there. He's going to snap and he's going to give it off to Davis. Davis is going to hit, but bounce off his tackles and get out to about the 45 yard line of Miami. So he picks up about 10 on the play. Tackle is made by DeAndre Montgomery.
Green's going to make another check of the line. A lot of checks for both offenses here as they like to make their checks. And uh, Green's going to feel the pressure is going to be thrown away, out of bounds. And uh, Green really took a big hit there from the Miami defense. And it looked like it might have been a chance for a interception for the Miami secondary, but this floated a little bit too far out of bounds. for DeAndre Daniels, the cornerback for the Red Hawk defense. So it's going to bring up a second and 10 at the 44-yard line of Miami. A minute two to go in this first half. Green's going to drop back. He's going to get a little screen pass out to his running back. He's going to get out to about the 36-yard line of Miami. He's going to be just short of the first down marker. Yeah, looks like somebody's down on the sideline there for Marshall. And looks like we're going to get an injury timeout before this third is two for Miami. So lots of time here for Marshall to uh, work their way into field goal range as they're just about, well, we haven't seen any field goals today, but typically field goal range is inside the 30 and they're sitting about the 36 yard line. So a couple plays for a couple good amount of gains and they could be easily get in field goal range and push their lead back to a two possession game. And uh, so far in this drive, I feel like it's been a tale of two defenses earlier on. Looked like they're kind of stopping them and We've seen a little bit of big plays, but I feel like situations like this when it's third and two uh, is when you can see if the defense is going to bend or if they're going to you know, stay with them, especially with 55 seconds left in this game, um, especially to walk away with them. Uh, with Not getting a field goal or a touchdown is very important, uh, especially with Miami receiving the ball after half. Absolutely, as both teams are going to break the huddles and get back right back on the field here. So third and two for the Red Hawks as they're trying to get off the field here. Press coverage from the Miami defense from both of their second here. It's going to be a handoff to Davis. Davis is going to break it out and pick up the first down. And uh, Dave, that was correction. It was not Davis on the carry. That looked to be uh, Tyler King on the carry as he picks up the first down. And both of those guys, King and, and Davis, have Really look comfortable getting out to the outside and breaking some tackles and getting the edge as Green's going to roll out. Feeling the pressure, he's got a man out, and they're going to say that he got his foot down. Because that's going to bring up a second and three for the Thundering Herd. That's going to be close. They might want to go to the official review there, but in there we're going to get a call as the play is going to be whistled dead and they're going to go to the sideline and look that play over as it was it was a pretty close play there So let's take it to a little bit around the country here, around the college football world. It looks like Ohio State ended up squeaking up the victory, 77 to 31 against Oregon State. Oklahoma, number seven, Oklahoma, knocks off FAU and Lane Kiffin, 63 to 14. You gotta talk about Penn State. Penn State's the big one right now. And Penn State looks like they squeaked out the win against Appalachian State in overtime 45 to 38 so uh, Appalachian State trying to um really close to another huge upset as they upset in Michigan about 10 years ago so 
Some good uh, college football up ahead as well as Michigan Notre Dame tonight. Actually about to start in about five minutes and it looks like Auburn, Auburn ended up knocking off number six Washington 21 to 16. Georgia ended up beating Austin P 45 to nothing and Louisville and Alabama tonight and then you got Florida State Virginia Tech Monday night. So lots of college football and the NFL hasn't started yet so college football is also going to be on Sunday tomorrow so lots of college football started uh, Thursday night and it's good to be back looks like uh, Miami's rival Ohio OU squeaked out a win against Howard too 38 to 32 as the teams have taken the field once again and Green's going to drop back looking throwing and looks like he's got his man it's caught and they're gonna mark him down at the one yard line. That, that pass is completed to Tyree Brady who is seemed to be quite the factor for the Marshall offense so far. It's gonna be another close play if he got his foot down or not. And it looks like he did. as the review obviously was, came up earlier to uh, confirm that he got his foot down. So two plays in a row that are in question, but they're not gonna review it. Marshall's gonna, and it looks like they're gonna get another official timeout. They're gonna look at this one as well. see this time it's a little bit tough to see but the call on the field you got to remember it was a complete pass so maybe the last play if it was the other way around maybe they wouldn't have overturned it and they'd find conclusive evidence and this one might be a little bit too tough to tell as well so Marshall is looking like they're going to have the ball with 24 seconds left in the game at Miami's one yard line here. They'll have a first and goal with two timeouts remaining for both teams. So definitely enough time for the Thundering Herd to take a couple shots at the end zone, maybe just even a run. But Miami has yet to show that they have been able to stop the run today so it's yeah, gonna be tough agreed with that a lot of this drive has just been those those misdirection runs and a lot of creativity we've seen uh from marshall especially earlier on when we thought that you know the red hawks were actually getting their rhythm on defense so it's kind of a little deflating uh for the red hawks especially now that they have a first down at the one yard line and it looks like they're gonna uphold the call there and it's gonna be a set up exactly what we we've been talking about first in goal from the one yard line as uh, you've got to think this is a run as Marshall's outgained Miami and rushing yards 121 to 57 and they have some slippery running backs and looks like they are going to be in a run formation here a shotgun with three man backfield a little bit shift it's going to be a handoff to 21 it's going to be touchdown Marshall and on that run, it's going to be Artis Johnson, or Anthony Anderson, rather, the big running back who the first time we've called his name tonight. And he punches it in for his first touchdown of the season. So Marshall goes right down the field and answers Miami's touchdown. And pending the PAT, will be up 21-7 to going into halftime here with 21 seconds to go in the first half. And we're gonna get another review here. <laughs> so three straight plays that are very crucial to 
end of the second half or first half is uh, going to go to the review board for the referees on the sideline, and we'll see what happens here. And it didn't look like there was any doubt that he didn't get in there, but maybe uh, I just want to make sure, make sure that uh, they get the call right and uh, taking a little bit more time. It just seems like these last two minutes have taken longer than the whole first half in general. Yes, that is the story of college football. While this game has gone by fast, this is why college football games seem to last around four hours because of these reviews. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. And it looked like we were going to get a quick half, but now we're approaching the hour and 30-minute mark of the first half, which isn't too bad, but they're going to uphold the touchdown as uh, three reviews and three yeah, upheld, upheld calls. So just making sure the, no, no changes on them. So... The refs are making the good call, the, the, the correct calls on the field. So, I mean, we'll see if they can do that in the second half and not review them. But, I mean, you always want to make sure they don't get anything wrong. So that PAT is going to be up and good and sail over the back netting. It's going to roll into the statues of cradle of coaches here for Miami. And that's going to push Marshall's lead out to 14 as it is 21 seconds to go in this first half. Marshall is leading Miami 21 to 7. We'll be right back with the remaining seconds of this first half. This is Red Hawk Radio. And we are back here at Miami University as Marshall is set to kick it off to the Red Hawks. And the Red Hawks have been moving. They are moving. There is movement left to right as he stretches out to about the 32 yard line. Possession will start for the Red Hawks with 12 seconds left to go in the, in the first half. And we're back. It took a little bit longer than I thought. So Miami uh, looks like they're just going to concede this first half and take a knee and head into the locker room and regroup and see if they can have a much better first and second half than they did first half. So Raglan's going to take the knee, and both teams are going to head to the locker room as not the worst first half you could possibly imagine for Miami, but definitely not the best as they did kind of answer towards the end there, but have lots of work to do. They got their work cut out for them against uh, the Thundering Herd. Looks to be a very strong team as Miami has not been able to beat Marshall in the last four meetings. So lots of uh, things to be answered in this uh, upcoming second half for Miami. So Hans, what I mean, what do you see that Miami would be able to do to kind of flip the momentum and, and get something to go in besides the just James Gardner? Uh, connection with Raglan. I mean, it, other than that, they really haven't got much to going. I mean, they did have that, the wide open, um, maybe it was a busted coverage uh, touchdown pass to Sorensen. But, I mean, what do you see that Miami can do that can get them going in their offense and also on defense? I mean, offensively, I feel like the last two drives that they had weren't bad. Um, it just kind of didn't go their way uh, with that fourth down in the, in the first drive. On the second drive, I feel like a lot was going well when they had simple runs, when they weren't trying to be a little too fancy. Uh, since Kenny Young is very shifty, you know, just giving him a little bit of space and letting him do what he can do uh, really helps him out. And then with Gus letting him have a little bit of time, the offensive line hasn't been really giving him as much time as he seems to have. Uh, but on that touchdown drive, as we saw, he, he had time to actually move around in the pocket and make a, a wise decision. Uh, defensively, uh, it just looks like we might be a little bit slow and that Marshall has a lot more athletes than us. So defensively, uh, just finding a way to contain uh, their quarterback and 
they have a lot of weapons on offense. So for that, uh, that's why I'm not a coach. I'm just announcing. I don't have a, I don't have a great answer on that. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's it's, it's a tough answer because uh, I'm sure those coaches down there are going to be asking the same questions and try to try to make a couple of adjustments to try to get Miami back into this game as they look like they're climbing back into it. But once again, Marshall went right down the field and uh, punched in another touchdown. So we're going to wrap up this first half, and we'll be back with you after ha after this uh, halftime show by the Miami Marching Band. So 21-7, Marshall leading the Red Hawks here in Oxford. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. I'm Kenny Scherlinger next to Hans Justy. We will be right back and enjoy a little bit break, everybody.
testing.
And welcome back to Jaeger Stadium as we're going to start the second half here of Miami University for the other MU across the state or a couple states away, the Marshall University Thundering Herd. Marshall got to, off to a quick start, up 14-0. Miami answered, uh, got it the score to 14-7, and then Marshall uh, answered back again with uh, another touchdown. So that leaves us with a score of 21-7. But the good news is for the Red Hawks is they are going to receive the ball to start this second half as Marshall is lining up to kick it away. Never dangerous Jalen Bester is back to – Receive the kick for Miami, but it looks like he's going to take a knee in the end zone, and that's going to be the third touchback of the game for Miami as they're going to pick up the ball, and Gus Raglan at Gus Raglan and company are going to pick up the sticks here at the 25-yard line. And uh, this is a chance for uh, Miami to kind of rewrite how they want this game to be. Um, as we know, they're trailing 21-7. Uh, so we'll see what kind of offense they're going to trot onto this field. Absolutely is. Ragland wants to start off his senior season the right way with a win as the handoff's going to get out to Jalen Bester. Bester's going to break a couple tackles and get out to about the first down marker here. That seems like a perfect way to start off the half, wouldn't you say? Yes, but it looks like there's a flag down on the play, and it's going to be a holding on the Red Hawks, so that's going to negate the run there for Miami. And correction on that play, Maurice Thomas, the redshirt junior from Oxford, Ohio, went to high school right down the road here in Talawanda High School. Uh, First down run gets negated from a holding, so that's going to bring up a first and 20 here for the Red Hawks and Gus Raglan at their own 15-yard line as the clock tips, ticks down inside the 430 mark, 1430 mark. It's going to be another handoff to Kenny Young this time, and he's going to break a couple tackles but only get about two yards on the play. It's going to bring up a second and 18 for the Red Hawks at their own 17-yard line. And Hans, uh... Miami hasn't really been able to create much of a run game so far tonight. Uh, only about 48 yards rushing compared to 122 of Marshall. So they got to be able to get this going for their passing game to get going as well because they, they've completed a couple deep passes to James Gardner and Jack Sorensen, but they got to get that play action pass get going so that those, those front seven of Marshall bite and this is going to be a swing pass out to Kenny Young he's going to make a move get up the sideline and a pretty good pickup for Kenny Young as he gets out to about the 20 27 yard line and that's going to bring up a much much more manageable third and eight for the Red Hawks as they were hurt on the first play of the second half with the holding and a game like that's not going to go down in the rushing category, but when you get a bubble screen like that, getting 10 yards is really going to help on yeah, the rushing game. Exactly. It's almost like an ex uh, extension of the run game there as you're getting a little quick out route out of the shotgun for Kenny Young. And they, they love to run that little swing pass to him and a couple other their guys with Jalen Bester. Raglan's going to roll out and he's just going to have to throw it away as he felt the pressure again. And that seems to be a, 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 a very – uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It seems to be a very um, spot that he's been in a lot tonight um, oh, yeah. with uh, the big third downs and having to make a throw but really hasn't had a chance to set his feet and really look down the field because he's been chased by a thundering herd uh, defenders as Kyle Kramer's going to take the snap and kick it away and it's a low spiraling snap. It's going to hit down and take a Miami bounce and bounce inside. The uh, 20 yard line for Miami, and that's Willow down it at the 16 yard line. DeAndre Montgomery picks it up, and that's where the ball is going to be spotted. <clears throat> but the ref did seem like he spotted the ball at about the 15 yard line, and they're going to come back and correct it because it was, or no, they're just going to spot it at the 15. So Miami gets a little bit of help with the refs there because it seemed like it was picked up about the 16, so they get about a, 
a little yard help. Hey, every bit's going to help. Uh, but going back with Gus, like you said, he's been under duress all game, and that's been uh, the story between these two quarterbacks. I mean, we got, <clears throat> I believe, one sack on Isaiah Green earlier. Uh, but besides that, you know, he's had a lot of time back there, and with his uh, athleticism, he's been able to kind of elude our our defenders, whereas Gus has been under duress, and it's not been really comfortable in that in that pocket for him. Yeah, and that's another thing you really would – we haven't hit on it all is, is the six penalties compared to the one penalty for Miami and Miami uh, six to one ratio there for penalties for the game and that's really hurt them with six penalties for 45 yards and it seems like those penalties have been in crucial times because I mean they had a, a positive play right out the gate out of that first uh, out of halftime and it was negated by a holding and really just stalled them and put a bad taste in their mouth and punted it away right back um, to Marshall and their offense who has had a lot of success tonight and um, you just got to get another stop because that was a, that was a big uh, thing that Miami had in their pocket with again the ball right outside of, out, out of halftime but unable to convert there and especially uh, when you're playing a team that's more talented than you penalties and turnovers are definitely what's going to sway a game. A lot of teams have won with lesser talent when you win the penalties and turnover battle but when you're already uh, you know, at a deficit before, and you just give them more opportunity, that's really going to kind of hurt you, and that's what we're kind of seeing with the Red Hawks today. Yeah, and I mean, you do expect a little bit of rust coming out in the first game of the season as uh, you don't get a preseason in college football, so you always you always are going to have to account for a couple of uh, rusty penalties you're going to get right out the gate. Right out the gate, but uh, Marshall has not really had that problem tonight with only one, one penalty today. And um, Miami on the other side of that, really uh, shooting themselves in the foot there with those penalties and something that they haven't, can't afford, especially with the way that Marshall's offense have played and run up and down the field on their defense. So that's gonna reset the scene here as Green is gonna have two backs to his left and right in the shotgun. He's gonna bring around King to the right and he's going to get hit out to receiver, complete to complete to uh, Tyree Brady, who's been uh, very active tonight for the Marshall Thundering Herd and one of uh, Green's favorite targets. Same formation in the shotgun here for Green with his two tailbacks to his left and right. This time there's going to be no motion. Green's going to drop back. He's got his man again complete out to this time Obialo. Another one that Green has really felt comfortable with getting it out to and completing passes to in uh, tough situations. And that was a simple, this two-step drop right over the middle. Got uh, Obialo got a, a beat on his defender and uh, another first down for the Thundering Herd. Yeah, I mean, like you're saying, it didn't look that difficult for him with the two-step drop there. You're saying they got simple reads for him. I mean, if Gus had something like that, you'd see same similar completion. I think we could put you back out there and get a similar completion as well. <laughs> and it's going to be another handoff. This time it's going to go to Keon Davis on the carry, and he's going to get out into the si against the sideline. I only pick up about a yard there, so Miami containing Keon Davis on that run there and something that they've planned to do in this second in this second half is he uh, really got out loose and he's caused a lot of trouble for these Red Hawk teams in the last two years. So getting another shotgun set for Green this time with Davis out to his left. He's gonna drop back, feels pressure, Andrew Sharp's there to knock him down and he's just gonna throw it away. Flags all over the field here. We'll see what we can get we're gonna get here from the referee crew. Today's uh, head referee is Rod Hudson, umpire Tony Smith, head lineman Sergio De Hoyos, and we're gonna get a holding on um, Davis, the tailback here for Marshall, and that's going to push back the Thundering Herd offense to their own 23-yard line and bring up a second and 19.
Green's got four out wide. He's going to drop back. Feeling a little bit of pressure, rolling out to the left. He's going to tuck it and run, and he's going to pick up about five to six yards on that second yard scamper as Green is a little bit slippery. He can get out and run. He hasn't shown too much of that tonight, but when he has gotten out and tuck it and, and decided to tuck it and run, he has uh, been very effective tonight. Uh, but still a positive play for the Red Hawks, I feel like. Um, if you're not letting down a play downfield and you're just giving him a little bit of five yards to force a long third and long situation, you're, you're in a pretty good spot. Absolutely, as Green's going to have wide receivers split to his right, he's going to have one to his left. And he's going to have his tailback, Davis, shift to his left now. As he's going to drop back, he's looking, looking, he's got his man. It's going to be knocked away by the Red Hawks, and that was... Number 15 there for the Red Hawks to break it up. It looks to be DeAndre Daniels as he comes up with the big play there as uh, Green had his man and uh, Tyree Brady once again. And it was wide open, but uh, Daniels made a very nice play. Uh, another returner for the Red Hawk defense. Uh, one who's trying to place the role of Heath Harding and Tony Reed in the secondary for this Red Hawk defense. So. Miami gets off the field, and Kenny Young will be back to field the punt. Lefevre is going to kick it away for Marshall. He's going to take a rugby-style kick, and that's going to be high and short. It's going to bounce down, take a Marshall bounce, and roll to about 36-yard line of Miami. So pretty good field position for Gus Raglan and the Red Hawks to start their second possession of the second half. We're going to take a quick break. 21-7, Marshall leading Miami with 10.25 to go in the third quarter. You are listening to Red Hawk Radio. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Jaeger Stadium as the Miami Red Hawks are going to take over on offense with 10.25 to go and try to go down the field and try to get this within a one possession game again for the Red Hawks and Chuck Martin and company. I'm Kenny Scherlinger and to my right is Hans Justice and uh, we're going to give you these last two quarters of play here for the Red Hawks as uh, they're going to try to uh, get on the right foot here in a 1-0 start. But uh, Got some work to do so far as Raglan's going to drop back and pass, and he's going to get his man, James Gardner, but it's going to be knocked away short, and it's going to bring up a second and ten. And you definitely want to get it right on the right foot and get a, a extra win in the, the win-loss category here as Miami travels down to Cincinnati to next week, next Saturday, playing their arch rival, Cincinnati, who they haven't beat in quite a while, and that game will take place at 8 o'clock 
and we'll have the call for you and this game that game will be at Paul Brown Stadium home of the Cincinnati Bengals so it should be an exciting game Red playing in an NFL stadium as Raglan's going to tuck it and keep it and go and he's going to go down after picking up about a yard so 39 coming up for the Red Hawks and uh, Hans I know you're excited to make it down there because uh, you're it's the home of your Cincinnati Bengals, and it should be cool. That should be awesome. Home of the Red Rifle is what I like to call it. Yeah, I'm just kidding. So we'll have that call for you on Red Hawk Radio on YouTube Live at 8 o'clock, and hopefully we'll get a rain delay, and we'll start right on time, and it should be a lot of fun. One of the oldest rivalries in college football, as Raglan's going to have the shotgun snap with Alonzo Smith to his right. He's going to drop back. He's got a man. James Gardner is going to be knocked away in the incomplete pass. It's going to bring up fourth down for the Red Hawks. And it looks like the Red Hawks have no choice but to punt it away. So Kyle Kramer is going to come on to kick it for Coach Martin and company. One thing I, I would want to hit on here is that Miami has not had many mishaps if at all on special teams which is what the story of the game was last year when they played in Huntington West Virginia as this kick is well booted away it's going to be fair caught and he's going to go down inside the 10 yard line so great punt there as King had to fair catch it and fall down on his uh, on his butt behind uh, the 10 yard line so that's where Marshall's going to pick it up so yeah like we said the, the story of the game last year was Miami didn't have any trouble on offense and had a couple turnovers, but the story of the game was the, the special teams battle and the two touchdowns given up as Keon Davis returned two kickoffs for touchdowns. Please welcome to the field your Miami University team. These teams are pretty familiar with each other. It used to be Big time rivals when they were in uh, the same conference. Now uh, Marshall has switched over to the Conference USA, and this uh, rivalry has went back to 1905. And Miami does lead the series. Yeah, they currently lead the series uh, 30 to 13, I believe. Yep. So that's with the one tie in it. Yeah, just about. And like we said earlier, with the bad blood and about the uh, running up the score in 19, the 1971 game here in Oxford and a lot of the uh, uh, Marshall faithful have not forgotten about that even though it was a long time ago and it, it was very unfortunate but sometimes you just got to play the game and I guess Miami felt that uh, they had no choice but to just play the game as hard as they could and unfortunate but senior linebacker Chase Hancock for Marshall definitely um, remembers it and this uh, week, he, he said that we're, we're gonna we're gonna get this for the 75, and that's something that that Marshall always refers to as the 75 victor, victims in the 1970 plane crash as they were flying home from a game in North Carolina, and 75 players and football staff were tragically killed, and it's well documented in the movie with Matthew McConaughey and and We Are Marshall, but it's always unfortunate, but. Marshall's always been able to rally behind that and, and respect the victims, but that just adds a little bit to the rivalry here as uh, you, as you can rightfully so, wasn't very, they weren't very happy about that game in 1971, so. And, and even when uh, Marshall did leave the conference, you say these teams have always scheduled each other every once in a while. So they got the home and home this past the past year. Played at Miami, traveled to Huntington last year, and Marshall taking a visit to Oxford, and they've traveled very well tonight as it uh, looks like Marshall might be about 50-50 split with fans here, here in Oxford. They, they must like Oxford a lot. I mean, everybody does. It's, it's a very, very awesome place, but as the handoff's going to go to... Tyler King. But it's a pretty easy drive, about three and a half hours from Huntington, so it could be a, a nice little J trip or you can make it like a long weekend and stay stay last night and maybe tonight. And 
enjoy the Miami Valley area. As Green's going to get it out to his wide receiver, it looks like he's got Brady again. He's going to break a couple tackles for the first down, and it looks like we're going to get possibly a late hit. No flags on the play. The Marshall fans to our right do not like that non-call as they felt that his player, what their player, Tyree Brady, was hit a little bit late out of bounds there. But nonetheless, it's going to be a first down for Marshall at their own 29-yard line as the clock is going to tick inside the 840 mark. Green's going to take a snap, and he's going to hand it off to King as he's going to get a big hole up the middle and get out to another Marshall first down. And Marshall, when they're, when they're driving, they, they don't waste any time. They seem to pick up the first down at their first down and uh, don't like uh, using up their downs. They, they want a fresh <laughs> set of downs every, um, every play as it looks like there's a Miami player down on the field. When we get the number, we'll let you know who that is. He's being attended to by the trainers. Haven't seen many uh, injuries at all, at all tonight. So always a good thing. Mm -hmm. As the sun has set here in Oxford, it's getting a little bit cooler, but very nice night. After the rain, very it cooled down everything, and looks like the field conditions are good. Even though it's turf, it drained pretty well, so no injuries. And it looks like that was Brad Kenning, the linebacker front Ann Arbor Michigan they're going to walk off the field under his own power he looks to be all right hopefully he can enter the game after a little bit of a rest screen's gonna be in his ever so comfortable Shotgun formation with his running tailback, King to his right. He's got three out wide, two to his left. It's going to be a fake to his left. He's going to get his man, King, and it's going to be completed out to the Miami 45-yard line. A nice little play there. King got out of the backfield quick and turned around. A little back shoulder fade action there. And a uh, big chunk play again for Marshall and Green. And he's looked – I mean, I see, like, why they started him uh, – for the first game, he's, he's looked very sharp tonight as King seems to be the man of the hour. He's going to get the handoff up the middle and get out to about a five-yard gain. He's going to bring out of a second and five from the Miami 39-yard line. Again, Marshall's very comfortable with being in Miami's territory here. Yeah, they haven't received much resistance at all, especially during this drive. Green's going to drop back, look, he's going to tuck it and run. You know, he's going to get it out to his receiver, and he's going to complete it out to Willie Johnson with a reception. He's going to be about a half a yard short, and it looks like we do have another injury on in the field, so we might have jinxed it a couple plays ago, and it looks to be... That looks to be DeAndre Daniels, the cornerback for Miami, who's had a pretty good game. Had a big, uh, big pass breakout in the first half, to as the clock was ticking down, and has shown to be one of the better defenders for the Red Hawk defense. Coach Hauser and Coach Nowinski, the co-offensive or co-defensive coordinators. For Miami, have their work cut out for them. Even after this game, I mean, they seem to have made to a couple of adjustments and have slowed down Marshall a little bit, but definitely um, have their cut out work cut out for them as they're going to go against the team that's going to be ready to play next week down in Cincinnati. As Miami is technically the home team, but Paul Brown is only. A couple miles away from the Cincinnati campus, but also not very far from here either. So about a 40-minute drive for Miami fans and family and players and us to make the trip down. It should be a good time. So make sure you join us next week at 8 o'clock on Red Hawk Radio on YouTube Live. And it looks like Daniels is going to walk up on his own power. So 
a little bit of the injury bug is hitting Miami here late in the middle of the third quarter here. So it's going to bring up the third and one, and it's going to be a big down for the Red Hawk defense trying to get off the field. And it looks like Green's going to have three weapons out wide for him, one to his right, two to his left. He's got his running back, Davis, to his right. And you got to look for the handoff here. It's going to be a handoff to Davis, and he's going to break a couple tackles and get out to the first down. So why don't you hit the Staples button and say that was easy and reset it and first down for the Marshall uh, Thundering Herd. we got to get one of those. We should get one of those. I agree. And that's just uh, been the theme of the night. All, everything that they've got, every pass play, uh, has just been opened up because of easy running games. They've, they've not received any resistance in that area. Absolutely is. Green's going to tuck it. And throw it out to his man. It looks like he's going to be caught. And it's going to be another Marshall touchdown. And that looked to be Brady on the reception there. As he just aired it out, went up and got it. And Tyree Brady has been maybe the key player for the Marshall offense. Has been the, has had a lot of success over the air and on the ground. But... Brady went up over two Red Hawk defenders in the end zone, and that pushes the lead out to 27-7 for Marshall, pending the PAT to make it 28-7. As the ball is snapped and kicked away, and the extra point is good, and that drive is a pretty quick drive for Marshall as they've looked to really take control of this game, and put Miami into a deep, deep hole. This is the deepest hole Miami has been in this tonight. So we'll see how they respond. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. Marshall leading Miami 27 or er, 28 to 7. We'll be right back. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. And after that short break, welcome back to Yeager Stadium as Marshall's going to kick it away to Miami as they are looking to answer with 6.32 left in the game and a 21 deficit as they're going to get a return by Jalen Bester. He's going to work his way to the right side of the field and go down and pick up an extra couple bonus yards and get out to about the 28-yard line, and that correction is – that is Maurice Thomas, the local, on the return. So really, uh, still a lot of time left, but feels like a do or die situation. You gotta get some points on the board here for Co Coach Martin and Gus Raglan as he's Gonna take a check at the line. He's got Kenny Young to his right. He's got three wide receivers, four wide receivers rather. He's gonna go out to Luke Mayock. It's gonna be incomplete. It was knocked away there by the Marshall defender. Chris Jackson on the brass break up there. <laughs> Excuse me. Now I feel for uh, the Red Hawks, it not necessarily do or die like you're saying to score. like in a, like a chance to win, but I feel like it's for their own spirits. If they don't see the ball moving, if they don't see um, possible points on the board, they themselves are going to possibly check out and just hope that this game is is over. Absolutely. This is going to be a second and ten. It's going to be a handoff to Kenny Young. Kenny Young's going to bounce it out to the right. Nowhere to go, really, as he's going to be taken down by a handful of defenders and pick up a couple yards there, but it's going to bring up about a third and five for the Red Hawks, which is a manageable third down as they're going to bring in Alonzo Smith here. Raglan's going to have Kenny Young in the slot as they have a trips formation to Raglan's left. Alonzo Smith to Raglan's left. He's going to look 
to the sideline. He's going to snap it. He's looking to the left, and he's got Kenny Young out there. And it's complete as Kenny Young picks up the first down as he was looking to the left the whole time, had a, a bunch of receivers over there. Kenny Young got open and got to the sideline, picked up a couple extra yards, and that's going to be a first down for the Red Hawks at their own 43-yard line. Very, very simple play there. You got to get out to your playmakers and, and just – just pick up those first downs and just pick them chunk by chunk. You can't can't go for the home run ball every every uh, play here, as we haven't really seen. I mean, maybe they should uh, try to throw a home run ball here to James Gardner, but Raglan's going to go deep to Sorensen again. He's going to go down to the 10-yard line and get dragged down as there goes the horse tackle. And, uh, I mean, we just called it. There's the home run ball, and that's been Jack Sorensen all day. He's two for two and almost pulled up for another touchdown, but was brought down with a horse collar. That's going to put the ball way down half the distance to the goal, and it looks like it's probably going to be spotted at around the three-yard line for Miami as Miami answers and see if they can punch it in. And, no, they're going to spot it inside the two-yard line, so about the one-and-a-half-yard line as Miami is back in business. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely a um, a touchdown saving horse collar. <laughs> that was egregious on that one. Uh, but definitely a nice play with Gus Ragland kind of throwing his receiver in stride. So here we go. Gus Ragland's going to take the snap. He's going to hit fake handoff, roll out. He's got his nobody, and he's just going to throw it out of bounds. So that's going to bring up a second and goal for Miami. Whistles are being blown. Let's see what this is. No flag of the play. Looks like we're going to get an offsides on Marshall, so that's going to reset the downs for Miami and move the ball about six inches closer to the goal line. Hey, it's, a, it's a big six inches. It matters. Absolutely. So maybe we'll see if Marshall's going to line up over the center. Maybe you can just sneak it in. But you also got to remember that both these teams don't really line up under center much. So... That would almost be a telltale sign of them having QB sneak. So Brock Gravelin's going to line up in the shotgun. He's got Lonzo Smith. He's going to hand it off. And Lonzo Smith's going to go over the top of the pile, and it's going to be a touchdown for Miami. Miami punches it in late into the third quarter, 4.32 to go as that pushes the score to 28-13, to pending the kick by Sam Sloman. And uh, Miami really needed that as uh, it wakes up a little bit of the crowd here here at Miami and what's left of the student section who uh, kind of got a little bit rained out. I think they expected a big crowd, but a three and a half hour rain delay can uh, deter some people. So that's um, unfortunate. So hopefully uh, make the trip down to Paul Brown next week as the kick is up and good. So that's going to put Miami back within two possessions, 28-14 to 14, as the Thundering Herd are leading the Red Hawks. If you're listening to Red Hawk Radio. We'll be right back.
And welcome back to Jaeger Stadium as Miami is on a little bit of a run here as they punch it in for the touchdown, trying to make this more of a game. Within two touchdowns now, they're going to kick it away. Sam Sloman, the big leaded kicker from Georgia, is going to wind it up and kick it away deep. And that's going to go way over the head of the Marshall returners and back for a touchback. So that's where Isaiah Green, the outstanding red shirt freshman, is going to take over as he has looked very good in his first uh, collegiate game. And you definitely see why he got the start and looks like uh, um, maybe that the, the Marshall coaching staff was just icing out the keeping Miami in the dark about that. Maybe that, that, that the decision was made a couple weeks ago, but um, which is a, is a little bit of a trend lately um, around college football. You see Nick Saban uh, is a little bit like that as well uh, with Jalen Hurts and, and Tui. So, but I think everybody knows who's going to start there. But here goes Green as he's going to air it out, and he's got a man complete, but it's going to be in his hands, but knocked away. I don't know if he dropped it, but uh, was just about to call that a complete pass as Gaines was the intended receiver there at a frostproof Florida. And that had six written all over it, and Unfortunate there for the for uh, the thundering herd, but very fortunate for the Red Hawks as they will get one of their lives um, taken away there. So here's the handoff to Davis. He's going to slip out and get out to about the 30-yard line and pick up a good chunk to bring up about a third and four from my their own 31-yard line. Marshall has not huddled up at all this this tonight. And uh, going with a hurry up, keeping Miami's defense on their heels, tiring out those big guys up front. And really hasn't seen, we haven't seen any real pressure from Miami besides the, the one sack. So getting to the quarterback, especially important when you have all these weapons for the Thundering Herd and a, a, a dual threat quarterback. So Green's going to step back. He's feeling a little bit of pressure. He's going to get flushed out to the right. He's going to get it out complete, and a tackle's going to be made. <laughs> by the Red Hawks, and that's going to be Josh Mays on the tackle, and it did look like he was going to be short until Josh Mays came up from the back of him and carried him to the first down. So a little bit of an unfortunate uh, play there for Miami because he was going down, and then Josh Mays just came up, and Josh Mays is a, is a pretty big kid and carried Davis to the first down. So that's going to reset the sticks for Marshall is going to be another handoff to Davis. He's going to, or King rather, and he's going to get out for a couple yards there as Miami kept good contain there on the speedy King. It's going to bring up a second and eight. King's going to be to Green's left. It's going to bring the blitz by Miami. He's going to be flushed, and he's just going to throw it away in the vicinity of a couple of his receivers, so no attentional grounding there. He was in the tackle box and was looking for Brady there. Um, Miami took a their nickelback, looked like Thompson, to bring the blitz and made a Green uh, a little bit uh, uncomfortable there as he had really no choice to throw it away, but that's going to bring up a third and eight, and Miami has a chance to get off the field once again. Green's going to have three wide outs, two to his left, one to his right. He's going to have King play blocking for him. He's going to get it out to Brady, but it's going to be overthrown and incomplete as there was a little window for Brady to catch that ball, but Green uh, just overthrew him, but good coverage there by the Red Hawk secondary. That's going to bring up fourth down. And, and I'm sorry. It looked like uh, Zegrick Raymond, the junior college transfer, was on the coverage there. And 
Lefevre's going to come on to kick off or punt it away for Marshall. Kenny Young's back. And it's going to be a short line drive punt. Kenny Young's going to return it, kind of get out, just make a couple slip tackles and pick up a couple yards. Ran about 15 yards, but only picked up about two yards going left to right as the Red Hawks are going to be moving from left to right across your computer screen or radio dial or whatever you're listening to here on Red Hawk Radio. So Miami's working towards the cradle of coaches and the end where they also have their retired numbers with the big seven Roethlisberger topping that list. So Gus Raglan looking to be another quarterback etched in history at Miami. He's going to take the field and drop back and get it out to Young again. And Young's going to get out to the sideline and pick up a couple yards there and uh, make it a very manageable second down. It's going to bring up a second and six from their own 33-yard line. And, I mean, if you're Miami, you get a quick score here. You – you uh, really have survived a lot and really dug yourself out of the holes and you gotta you gotta commend the team for not throwing in the towel here and uh just keep on fighting as they're they're really right in this game pending this uh this possession here and they they look to seem that they can move the ball a little bit of recent dragon's gonna drop back throw to luke mayock he's gonna complete the pass and slip out and break his first tackle and get a first down to about midfield as they are quickly approaching the Marshall territory as Miami's going to bring in Kenny Young and Jalen Bester and take out Sorensen, who has been the big play threat tonight. A uh, little bit uh, Sorensen, a junior, redshirt junior, but kind of a new face and didn't have much playing time with a lot of Red Hawks wide receivers graduating. Raglan's going to air it out deep to James Gardner. He's got him, and it's going to be incomplete, but it looks like we're going to get a pass interference on Marshall and a free 15 yards for Raglan in his offense as Gardner was wide open and really looked like that was the best opportunity, like you said earlier, when you're in the college game and it's not a spot foul and you get beat, you might as well just interfere with him. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would do it. I mean, you got to just got you got to do quick math in your head. You got to be like, is this over 20 yards or so? I'll just, I'll take the 15. And that was Jalen McLean Sapp, the 5'11", 176 junior out of Jacksonville, Florida, with the penalty as he got beat by the 6'4", James Gardner, who's looking to possibly enter his name in the NFL draft after graduation. And this is going to be a quick pass to Nate Becker. And it's going to be another first down right over the middle. A little play action pass there and real quick throw for Raglan. And he zipped it in there and a, a nice uh, catch there by Nate Becker. As Miami is quickly approaching the red zone at the 23-yard line of Marshall. Raglan's going to jump back and he's going to go deep to Gardner in the corner of the end zone. It's going to be knocked away. And good coverage there by McLean Sapp, who just picked up the penalty two plays ago. He got out there quick and uh, looked like Gardner was uh, about to go up and high point the ball, but great great defense there as uh, Jalen McLean Sapp went back and looked for the ball and uh, avoiding a uh, pass interference but penalty there. So it's going to bring up, sorry. No, sorry, I was just going to say that uh, Miami looks to be opening up the field a little bit more than what we've seen in the first half, especially with the last drive and this drive. Yeah, it seems that they, for the first time tonight, they have a pretty good tempo going, and, and Raglan looks like in a good groove here as it's going to be a handoff to the left for Bester. He's going to break it out to the right and get down inside the five-yard line there. So a great run there by... Correction, Maurice Thomas on the play. They're the local from Oxford, Ohio. He's going to pick up another Red Hawk first down as they've really got it going here. And we looks like we're going to get a good game here as Miami's knocking at the door once again and trying to get this game within a one possession as lots of substitutions are being made by both sides here. Miami's going to go to a, a power set with no wideouts and three in the backfield, so we'll see 
what Raglan's going to do here. He's going to have a read option and keep it and go down inside the three-yard line. Picks up about a yard and a half, and that's going to bring up a second and goal with uh, 10 seconds to go, and that clock is going to be running, and it looks like we're not going to get another play off in this third quarter. So the Miami sideline is going to get those fours up, and it's, it's do or die time now for Miami as they're going to switch fields. Unfortunately for us, is that's going to be the far side of the field. It was right in front of us earlier, but or just now. So it'll be a little bit of a challenge, but that's going to take us into the fourth quarter as Miami is down two touchdowns to the Thundering Herd, 28 to 14. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. We'll be right back with the second down and goal for the Miami Red Hawks. Welcome back to Jaeger Stadium as it's homecoming on the campus of Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. A little bit of an unorthodox homecoming date for uh, Miami, but it is what it is. I mean, it was the only way that kind of lined up for as uh, it looks like down on the field they announced the homecoming king and queen who have only been on campus for about a week as uh, Coach Doc Holliday poked a little fun at Miami in his press conference this week saying how, how I don't know how they're going to pick the homecoming king and queen as they've been on campus for like not even a week. So a little bit of, a little bit of a um, shot at Miami and their, their little bit of scheduling, but no big deal. Miami's going to punch it in here for a touchdown and Doc Holliday will we'll, um, see a little bit of the Miami Powers. It's going to be a handoff to Alonze Smith, and he's going to get stood up about the two-yard line. So that's going to bring up a third down and goal for the Red Hawks, and this is going to be very crucial. But you got to believe this is a uh, four-down territory here, as Miami hasn't hasn't uh, attempted a field goal at all tonight, and neither has uh, Marshall. So. Got to believe you got two shots at this. We'll see what they're going to do. And it looks like they got another power set. Gus Raglan in the shotgun with Nate Becker to his right and Alonzo Smith to the back of him. It's going to be a play action fake. Raglan's going to go up for Becker and overthrow him. And there was nothing doing there. And uh, the bootleg, as he only had two receivers out there. And it looked like it was 
Becker and Luke Mayock, I believe. The Red Hawks are uh, electing to stay on the field. Yep, so not really surprised, but they're going to spread it out a little bit here. You're going to have Mayock on the left far side. You're going to have Jack Sorensen in the slot position. You're going to have Nate Becker right off the line of scrimmage. You're going to have James Gardner in the, the right side of Raglan. So Raglan's going to take the snap. He brings Becker to the left. Raglan's going to fake and go to Gardner. It's going to get he's all he's going to get mauled by the cornerback of Marshall. It's going to be incomplete. Uh, did look like it might have been a pass interference there as uh, the Miami fans did not like that, but a little confusing. It was kind of expecting a penalty there, but I guess the refs thought it was a clean coverage there. So that's going to turn over the ball, and Miami is going to turn it over to Isaiah Green in the Marshall offense inside their own end zone here. So. Yeah, real deflating situation for Miami right there. They took all that time to march on the field. Uh, they could have left with a field goal, but like you said, nobody's attempted a field goal this whole game. So, I mean, you said that was the right decision at that time, but uh, I don't know. So Green's going to take the snap in his own end zone. He's going to hand off to Davis, and nothing's going to be doing there. As he might have gotten like a quarter of a yard there. That's going to bring up a second and nine. But yeah, I mean, like you said, very deflated for Miami as that really wasn't the best opportunity there. I mean, he was looking for Gardner and it was good coverage. He looked like he had the defender all over his back, but down on the field, they felt like it was a clean uh, play. So. Second and nine here for Green. It's gonna be, he's gonna drop back this time. He's gonna get his man Brady and he's gonna be stood up by the Juco transfer, Raymond on the tackle. And it's gonna bring up a third and four for the Thundering Herd. And on that catch correction was Opa Abialo. Miami has got a big dose of Abialo and and Brady tonight, along with the tailbacks of Marshall, the combo of Davis and King. So third and four, as Green's going to hand it off to Davis, and Davis is going to go up the middle and break a couple tackles and get out for the first down. So that's that, and my Marshall's going to get out of there a little bit more comfortable situation now at their own 20 rather than in their own end zone and pick up a fresh set of downs as the clock's going to tick down to the 2.30 mark here, or 12.30 mark here in at Yeager Stadium. Green's going to have King behind him in the shotgun pistol set. Green's going to give a little swing pass to King. King's going to try to cut it up field, break a couple tackles, and get about four or five yards on the play. It's going to bring up a second and six for Green and company. Green's going to take another shotgun snap. It's going to be a handoff to King, and he's going to get wrapped up right away. A tackle is made by Joshua Allen. So it's going to bring up another third down for Marshall as Miami is going to look to get off the field here and get some good field position. Marshall's gonna have four out wide with King behind Green in the backfield. Now to his right. Isaiah Green's gonna take the snap. 
He's going to get a little screen pass out to Brady. It's going to be caught, and it looks like he's going to be short as nothing's doing there on the screen pass, and they've been pretty successful with the with those type of plays today, getting their uh, weapons in open field, but great defense there. Miami didn't bite on the uh, screen and sniffed it out and made a tackle, and that's going to bring up fourth down, and Kenny Young's going to be standing at his own 30-yard line trying to get a little bit of return here as we haven't seen much action on special teams at all given what happened last year in this series. So Lefebvre is going to come on to punt it away. This time it's going to be a high line drive. Kenny Young's going to return it and go up the middle for a couple yards and go down. So that's where Miami will take over. It's 28 to 14 as the Thundering Herd are leading the Miami Red Hawks here in Oxford, Ohio. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. And welcome back to Jaeger Stadium here. You're listening to the Red Hawk Radio broadcast as we're presenting to you guys the Miami vs. Marshall opening football game here for the 2018 season here in Jaeger Stadium on the campus of Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. As Raglan's going to take the snap and look deep for Sorensen. It's going to be complete. Sorensen's going to get out on an open field inside Marshall territory down to about the 25 yard line. So Miami is back in business. And Jack Sorensen has been the answer for Miami when they really need it tonight. So maybe more to come. They've really, uh, I mean, when you have Jared Gardner out there you and a couple other weapons that Miami has with Young and uh, Alfonso Smith that you're gonna, ha you're gonna um, open some holes for the some other guys. So Sorensen's reaped the benefits of that. He's gonna be over the middle complete again to Nate ba Becker as Miami's really working the inside of the field here and he's going to get down inside the 10 yard line and Miami is right back in business right back where they were the first time so they're going to split out wide with four receivers it's going to be a fake pass and caught by looks like Nate Becker again so touchdown Redhawks it's tough to see down there and uh, the far end of the field, but it doesn't look like it was Nate Becker. We're gonna try to get the call for you, but either way, Raglan completes the five yard touchdown pass to, it looks like, Andrew Homer, the other tight end, the redshirt sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio. So 
a redshirt junior from Carmel, Indiana, rather. So that's going to bring on Sam Sloman to pull with Miami within one possession here as it's going to be 21 for the Red Hawks and 28 for the Marshall Thundering Herd. So right back into the game with 9.20 to go. The Red Hawks punch it in really quick, really short drive there, and uh, kind of forget all about that uh, failed fourth down. And Miami's uh, right back in it, Hans. Yeah, for sure. I feel like in that drive, though, they try to show that they have athletes as well. If you've been watching Marshall all day, I don't, I mean, I know they're a redshirt, um, their freshman QB on Marshall's side's been playing well, but honestly, I feel like a lot of his passes, he's been getting it because he has off athletic weapons. Uh, starting off with Torsten, I think that's what kind of, you know, kind of let the drive kind of become alive and then kind of showing that we got people who can run and catch as well. Absolutely. So we're going to take another break as Miami punches it in and right back into the game and showing the most life they have all night. So 28 to 21, Marshall still up, but Miami is right on their coattails here. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. Welcome back to the Acre Stadium as Miami has answered with uh, the quick score at about the, the midway point of this fourth quarter. And Hans, don't look now, but Miami has cut the score in half. And it looked like Miami was losing control of the game, but right back into it as King's going to be tackled and slip away on the return to about the 30-yard line. So... That's where Green, Isaiah Green and the Marshall offense is going to pick it up and try to answer and try to put away uh, Miami as they have gotten right back into this game and are looking pretty confident with a couple defensive stops and a couple of uh, quick drives. And e even though they didn't punch it in on the second to last drive and came up short on the fourth down, um, they were at a very quick uh, they forgot. They forgot about it, and <laughs> this is the one down the field, and and uh, are keeping it rolling. So that's where Green is going to take over, and he's going to roll out, and he's going to be chased and go down. That sack is made by Miami, and that's going to be Brad Caning, the senior out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, who has really stepped into a role as one of the leaders for the Miami defense. And that's going to bring up a second and 17 in a position that Marshall really hasn't been in much tonight as they've really been good about uh, their first downs and getting them quick. Yeah, for sure. I feel like the defense got a little bit of hope ever seeing the offense punch it in. So see another spirited effort from them. Isaiah's going to... Get it out to his favorite receiver, Brady, and it's going to be complete. And it looks like 
DeAndre McDaniel was draped all over him, and it might have been either way because McDaniel was kind of arguing to the ref that he was getting held. But other than that, they're going to just call it a completion and, and uh, say that it was equal shoving back and forth. But it's going to bring up a third and seven for the Miami defense and the Marshall offense. Isaiah Green is going to try to convert here. He's got his receivers to his left. He's going to throw it deep. And it's going to be sail right over his head. And it looks like Miami has no flags on the field. And they're going to take it over with 7.45 to go as we are getting into the do or die times of the fourth quarter for Miami as the ever so dangerous Kenny Young out of Tallahassee, Florida is going to step back and try to spark this Miami offense a little bit with a return. That's something he hasn't been able to do tonight as... He's gotten a couple yards, a couple like decent returns, but nothing big, nothing, nothing that you would make of note of. So you got to believe that if he gets a chance here, he could he could bust it open. So Lefever again is gonna punt it away, move to the right, kick it away. It's gonna be low and short. Young's gonna single for the Herrick fair catch and catch it at about the 26-yard line. So that's where the senior Gus Raglan, who has to, at times have had ice water in his veins, is going to try to lead the Red Hawks down the field once again and tie up this game for the first time tonight as the last time we were tied was a 0-0 start of the game. And Marshall made sure of that quickly to erase that tie with a 7-0 lead. So that's where Raglan's going to take over and Got to believe that Miami feels very confident in their offense after that last drive and the, the last two drives, actually. And that last drive was quick. Uh, only a couple plays for them to get down like like uh, lightning. So we'll see what happens here. And the game has gotten very exciting as we hit a little bit of a lull there. And Marshall seemed to take, care, take uh, control of the game. And it kind of looked like it was not going to be reachable for Miami but right back into it and the crowd's coming a little bit alive and you can see the Marshall fans feeling a little bit more anxious here as they don't want to take a sad three and a half hour drive back to Huntington West Virginia so hopefully the Red Hawks can get a victory here going into the big rivalry with the Cincinnati Bearcats no, and it's uh, also great to see what momentum can do. Um, so we saw them march down the field really quick for Miami. The defense came and did their job. And I feel like um, just containing their QB and making sure that receivers are not busting open for wide open looks, then you're going to get results as they had. I feel like a lot of times that uh, Marshall's been marching down the field strictly on athleticism and getting a lot of separation from their defenders. So. Just keeping an eye on that. I know it's going to be hard, especially as the game is waning and fatigue is setting in, but this looks like fatigue is both ways. Marshall might be setting in as well, and it might be time for the Red Hawks to kind of jump on that. Absolutely, as both teams are going to break the huddle on the sideline, and the media clock is going to tick down, and we're ready to rock and roll here as both teams are trying to rally the troops here over on the Marshall sideline. They're trying to trying to withstand this run from Miami as it kind of feels like a little bit of like a basketball run late into the game here for Miami as they've went up and down the field two straight times and been able to convert at least once. So Ragland's going to hand it off to Kenny Young. Kenny Young's going to bust it out a little bit to about the 30-yard line, pick up a, a six yards. It's going to bring up a second and four for the Red Hawks as we're under the seven-minute 30 mark here in Oxford. Young's going to go to the sideline and catch a, a breather. Raglan's going to have James Gardner to his right. He's going to have all Smith to his left. He's going to bring his tight end over into the slot. It's going to be a fake handoff to Smith. He's going to go to Gardner and it look like they weren't on the same page there as Gardner turned around looking for the ball and it looked like Raglan was expecting him to keep going on a streak and that's incomplete and it's going to bring up a third and five as the Marshall faithful are going to try to make as much noise as possible to affect the Miami offense here as they're right 
two as Miami is right in the visitor section over here in Yeager Stadium. So Gardner and Mayock to Raglan's right. It's probably going to be looking there. He's got Sorensen down to his left at the, the numbers. He's going to go to Gardner deep. Gardner's going to get held and go up and make the catch. James Gardner, man, he is a, 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 a lot to handle when he um, gets going there. He, he turned around and made the catch and was a penalty on the play. We're going to see what the call is, and the refs are looking like they're going to walk it back, and they're going to call it on James Gardner. So that's going to be an offensive pass interference there as he created a little bit too much space illegally there to make that catch. As we see uh, Coach Martin not very happy on the sidelines there as it's going to bring up a third and 20. So about third and a mile here for Miami as they really need to get it as we're getting into the nit and gritty of the fourth quarter with 6.30 to go on the game clock here. Raglan's going to have four out wide, two on his right, two to his left. Kenny Young is just going to take the draw and nothing doing there. He's just going to get out for about a yard and Miami's going to have to punt it away no question about it with Kyle Kramer and the punting unit coming on to the field to try to push Marshall as back as far as possible and not give them a short field but it's going to be tough we're going to have they're going to have to get a very good punt and some good coverage here Evan Crabtree is the long snapper for Miami he's going to snap it to Kramer Kramer's going to get it away and it looks to be a decent punt, and King's going to field it, and he's going to get up middle of the field and break a couple tackles, and he's got one man to beat. Kramer gets tripped up, and he's going to go down inside the 15-yard line. But he doesn't think he went down, and he's not running in the end zone, but they're going to mark him down at about the 11-yard line. And that is the first time tonight that we've seen special teams be a real factor in the game and it's going to be tough for the Miami defense now in the shadow of their own goal post trying to make a stop to keep themselves in the game already down seven with 539 to go in the fourth quarter as the mean green of Marshall are going to be Pumped up to see if Marshall can punch it in as we see a Got a Chad Pennington jersey down there. So Green's going to snap it and give it out to Davis. Davis going to break it out to the left, and it looks like he's going to go into the end zone, but I think this one's coming back as there's a flag in the backfield, and they're going to get a hold on the thundering herd and that's going to negate the touchdown as the Marshall band is celebrating with their fight song but they're going to call the hold and walk them back 10 yards so it's going to be first and 20 from the 21 yard line so a little bit more room for error for Miami to try to get a stop and maybe maybe force a field goal which we haven't seen tonight and they may not be very confident in their place kicking unit so that might be not why why we haven't seen any of that tonight but it's going to be a fake give to Davis and Green's going to go deep and looks like he came up with the ball and it looks like we're going to get a pass interference on the defense. And it looks like they're going to say he was in bounce and give him the touchdown. So that's going to be another touchdown for the Thundering Herd. So they just shake off that negated touchdown and come up with a corner touchdown, deep ball for a 21-yard 
20-yard touchdown pass for Isaiah Green. And pending the PAT, it's going to be 35-21 Marshall as Miami is back into that hole with 5.27 to go in the game. And the kick is up and good. So Miami has their work cut out for them and not much time to do it here, Hans. And uh, Miami hasn't shown any quit, but it's going to be tough for them to get out of this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we've been over, we might be overstating and overplaying the, uh, the theme of momentum, but I mean, if the momentum was on the Red Hawks side, it's definitely not on right now. So we'll see. I mean, coming out flat offensively and coming out even flatter on defense in a kind of short field situation because of uh, that punt return kind of put them in a rough situation. But uh, we'll see. What we, we'll see what they can do. What we can do in, on fighting back on this. Ball is going to be moved up on the kickoff for Marshall. After the penalty, so they're going to kick it away. And it's going to be too far for the Miami return, so they're going to take over at the 25-yard line, and Raglan's back on the field. And, I mean, I guess the only upside about it is the Miami offense has didn't get that much of a rest, and more importantly, the defense for Marshall hasn't had much of a rest, so maybe they can take advantage of that and get a quick score and get within a, for one possession again. The time is not on the Red Hawks side with 5.27 left to play in the rest of this game. And you, you got to believe that Miami's going to take some shots here. Dragon's going to drop back, hit, get some pressure, step up in the pocket, air it out to Gardner. It's going to sail way over his head out of bounds, and that's going to bring up a second and ten with 5.20 to go in the game for the Red Hawks. Raglan's going to step back, get it out to Smith on the right. He's going to cut it upfield and get down to about the first down marker. He's going to be a little bit short. It's going to bring up about a third and one as the clock continues to tick down to the five-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. And probably four down territory for Miami for the rest of the game here. So it's going to be handoff to Smith. Smith's going to get out and pick up the first down, but nothing much after that as he picks up uh, a couple yards. Going to bring up a first down for the Red Hawks as the clock continues to run. And it really shouldn't be running because the chains haven't been set yet. So that's a little bit weird. It looks like nobody has caught that, but nonetheless, it's going to be 430 left in the game. Raglan's going to get out to Mayock on the sideline. He's going to go out to about midfield and pick up the first down. Clock now stops before the chains are set. Raglan's going to drop back. He's got his man Smith out of bounds to about the 41 yard line and they're going to move a chains once again as the clock stops it's starting
Now four minutes to go. Raglan's going to drop back, go deep to Mayock, and he looks like he's get held and thrown down, and that's going to be a pass interference on Marshall. Easy call there. And Miami's going to pick up an extra 15 yards with 3.56 to go, and most importantly, that stops the clock. Miami does have all three timeouts, but they need to keep those. Uh, if they do get a score, they will have to onside kick, and if they will need those timeouts to stop the clock if Marshall gets the ball back. So that's going to walk up the ball to about the 26-yard line, so Miami's back in business. Knocking on the door of the red zone, and he's Gus Raglan's going to try to punch it in here as he's got three wide. He's going to drop back. He's looking for Gardner. He's got him in the uh, corner, and he's going to complete it, and they're going to say he got his foot down. So Gardner's inside the five-yard line as that was a nice ball fry by Gus Raglan to James Gardner, who they've had. Very, a lot of success today connecting with each other. So first and goal at the three yard line and we're gonna get a dead ball and most likely a review on the play. And on the replay board it looks like he did get at least one foot down if not two so that would, it would have been good in the pros. So I think this will be a quick review and we'll get right back to the action with 3.41 to go in the fourth quarter. Miami's trying to stay alive here and punch it in to get within a touchdown of the Thundering Herd. Once again, they're going to confirm that catch, and Miami's going to have the first and goal from the three-yard line. Got to get a quick score here, Hans. You got to believe that, right? Got to believe that for sure. I mean, uh, we're placed at the, the three-yard line uh, with, granted, four attempts, so hopefully you can get one of those in. Looks like Gardner's going to line up in the slot position to Raglan's left. Raglan's going to look to his left and get it out to Kenny Young for the touchdown as Kenny Young scoops that short pass off the ground and falls right back into the end zone. And Miami is back within one possession pending the PAT by Sam Sloman with 3.31 to go in the game. Miami is not dead yet as they have an opportunity to have an onside kick and uh, all three timeouts remaining. So they have some chance of getting the ball back. And if not, they will have uh, an opportunity to stop Marshall and stop the clock three times. So the kick is up and good. So Miami is down now. Seven points, 35 to 28. We'll be right back with you. It's 3.31 left on the game clock here in Oxford, Ohio. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio.
And don't look now, Miami has cut the lead in half once again, and they have a fighting chance as it looks like Sloman's is going to kick it away deep with, with 331. And me and Hans were having a, a talk at the break if they really did have the uh, kick it away or have the onside kick, and they're just going to kick it away. It's going to be a roller down over King's head, and he's just going to take it out of the end zone, and he's going to go down in the end zone. It looks like it's going to be a safety. They're going to mark him with and no, the refs are going to mark him at the two-yard line with forward progress, and it did not look like that to me that he broke the line of gain there. It looked like he was in the end zone, so maybe this will be a review here. And uh, you got to believe, what, what was he doing there? I, I mean, he, maybe he touched it, and he couldn't, he couldn't knee it down in the end zone, but... It, it didn't look like he it looked like it bounced over his head so like his player all his guys were saying to knee it down and he's lucky he didn't get called for a safety there because that was really close and I really don't believe that he he went back it, it, he went back it looks like and I don't understand why they're not reviewing it because it looked like he turned back and like when you turn back that's a that's a football move that's not forward progress in my opinion but nonetheless it's gonna be 326 to go. Miami's got Marshall backed up in their own goal post, and they, this is probably the best opportunity you could possibly have. So Green's going to take the snap, hand it off to Davis, and there's going to be nothing going there. They're going to tackle him right at the one-yard line. Looks like he's going to lose about a yard, and Miami's going to take a timeout with 3.20 to go, and uh, it was looking pretty uh, – the, the chances were looking very meager for Miami five minutes ago, and now they're looking – a lot more favorable and it, all these Marshall fans here are just can't believe like the, the, the series of events that have happened <laughs> and uh, you just got to believe that we're going to be in for a wild ending either way so this is this is a little bit exciting and it seems like it's been a crazy day in college football so this add the the Oxford um chapter to the first week of college football in 2000 season 2018 season so we're going to see what happens here with a second and ten from Marshall's two. Now this end zone is is uh, cornered off by the, the football facility, so not much crowd noise going on on that side of the field for the Marshall snap count. So we're going to see what happens here. It looks like he's going to have... Green's going to have three wide with King to his right, standing in his end zone, right in between the I and the A in Miami. It's going to be a, a handoff to King, and he's going to – or it's going to go to – Keon Davis, rather, and he's going to get out to about the six-yard line. It's going to bring another timeout, 3.14 to go in the game, third and five at – their own seven. Miami's going to look to get off the field here with plenty of time if they can get this stop here. If they don't get the stop, it's not exactly over, but it would basically it would basically um, end the game. So we're going to see what happens here as uh, the, the nerves are uh, getting a little bit pinched here. I don't know. I mean, you know what to say. Like, it's like a loss for words of how we were just in this low lull of, uh, of a game here, and then uh, this, this kind of was the momentum has shifted, and I don't even know what the momentum would be at right now. It's just on a, a, just a slider right now, just sliding <laughs> back and forth. So Miami does seem to have the momentum right now with a third and five, trying to get the stop. Green, the red shirt freshman, you gotta, you got to believe he's got to be a little bit nervous. His first collegiate game, this is a huge down for him. They're going to bring a motion man out. They're going to hand it off, and he's going to get tackled at the line, and Miami's going to get the stop and call a timeout with 3.09 in the fourth quarter. And Miami and Gus Raglan are going to get the ball back, and you got to believe they're going to have pretty good field position here as they're going to be punting away in the back of their own end zone here with the ball not even at the 10-yard line. So Miami, I don't know if you're, if you're Miami, if you're going to try to bring the pressure, maybe get a block, or you're going to play it safe and try to get a return from Kenny Young or um, maybe a variation of both. So we'll see what happens. We're going to draw it up here. Um, but not looking good for Marshall because the way that Miami's moved the ball of recent, the last 10 minutes, if they moved the ball with quite ease, they just haven't been able to get a stop. And 
get a couple breaks, and we'll see what happens. But Kenny Young's going to be standing at about his own 48-yard line. So looking for a big return here as Marshall got it earlier. Lefevre's going to stand in between the I and the A again in the Miami end zone. He's going to kick it away straight up and down, and Kenny Young's going to call for a fair catch at his own 42-yard line. So Miami with a short field, 3.02 to go. Gus Raglan, the veteran who has three years of experience under his belt from, from Cincinnati, Ohio, pretty, pretty much a hometown kid, uh, really strives in this type of position. And I, I think that he's going he's gonna to make a very good effort here. And it's pretty exciting here to, to get this game down to the end of the line because it looked like uh, Marshall really had this game at hand like 15 minutes ago real time. So we're going to see what happens here as Raglan has Kenny Young to his left. He's got four out wide. Raglan's going to take back the snap. It looks like he's got Becker over the middle. He's going to roll out. He's got Kenny Young, and he overthrows him. And it looks like he had a couple options there, but he was being chased, and he couldn't get the good look downfield. But nonetheless, it's going to be a safe throwaway for Gus Raglan with 2.56 to go in the game. Miami out of timeouts. As you remember, there's no two-minute warning in the college football. Um, the clock is supposed to stop after every first down until the chains are set, and that can work towards your favor, and obviously if you get out of bounds. So Miami has a lot to work with here. You can work the middle of the field rather than the NFL. You, you've got to work the sideline. So we'll see what happens. Miami's got the four wide, same set, with Kenny Young to his left. Raglan's going to drop back. He's looking, looking, scrambling again. He's just going to throw it away. And they're going to going to be a flag on the field, and we're going to see what happened. One of the Marshall players is has that guilty look of, like, <laughs> what what me on it? Like, so we're going to see what this is. Maybe it's illegal hands to the face. And they're going to get a holding on Miami. That's going to replay the down. So... Late into the game here, you don't want to you, you don't want to give up too much for Marshall. So they're gonna they're gonna probably keep all their the, the play all the Miami def, uh, weapons in front of them. So you might be able to get a good chunk on the second down and twenty, um, as opposed to if it was earlier in the game and and you can you can kind of tee off on them. But they're probably gonna play a little bit back here as Raglan's gonna have four wide once again. And they're not going to send a blitz. They're going to get it out to Gardner, and it's going to be overthrown. And that's going to bring up third and 20 from Miami's own 33 with 2.46 left. And Miami really has to get something going. They've had three throwaways so far and a holding call. So Raglan's going to have to pick up a couple more yards and maybe have to tuck it and run if they, they only brought – Marshall only brought their four def down defensive linemen there on the blitz. Um, so we're going to see what happens here with 2.46 to go. The score is 35 to 28, Marshall. Raglan's got three out to his right. He's look, he's going to get out to Bester. Bester's going to get up the field and get out to across the 35-yard line and get out to about The 38-yard line is going to bring up fourth and 15. Obviously, it's fourth down territory for the Red Hawks. And you have a number of things to do here. You can try to get the fourth down, the, the convert, or you can try to try to catch them off guard and try to go for the deep ball because you see that very often that a team is playing conservative and they get beat. So, Or they're playing up to try to just end the game. So we'll see what happens. Raglan's going to have three to his right. Kenny Young's going to split out to the slot. Raglan's going to snap, drop back. He's feeling the pressure. It's going to be tipped up, batted away, and incomplete. And that's going to be a turnover on downs for the Red Hawks. And looks like that's going to probably end the comeback bid for Gus Raglan and his offense as they come up short and really did not have anything going there at all as they did not have any plays going at all. I mean, they had one completion and three throwaways and a penalty. So not the best effort you're looking for 
from your offense late in the game with a chance to tie the game. So we're probably going to get probably Marshall with 2.22 left in the game. They're going to have to run it a couple times, and if they get a first down, then it's essentially over. Miami could stop them and have a few seconds with the ball, but we'll see what transpires here as Marshall's going to take a timeout. So 35 to 28, Marshall leading Miami. Game's not over yet with 2.22 left. Marshall's got first and 10 at their at Miami's 38 yard line. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. You're listening to Red Hawk Radio. Welcome back to Jaeger Stadium as Marshall is going to try to end the game essentially here and put this game on ice. It's going to be a handoff off the middle, nothing doing there. Miami's going to make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Miami is unable to stop the clock with 2.14 in running on the game clock. Green's going to be advised to take as much time as possible with his snap. We get uh, <laughs> some fan noise. It's going to be another run out to the side. And you did not want to go out of bounds there. That looked like Keon Davis with the carry. And the clock's going to run inside the two, 120 mark. And third and nine at the 37 here. And Miami can get a stop. They might get one play and try to pitch it back and try to try to ball for Miracle here, but got to get the stop first. Not too good at math here, Hans, but looks like they're going to take a timeout, run it down inside 50 seconds here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it is. It's going to be 47 seconds on the game clock. They're going to get 25 seconds. And uh, in a Red Hawk situation, uh, you just got to hopefully force a fumble or force them out of bounds, which will not happen because they'll be running up the middle. So I guess you're in a hopeful a turnover battle or time will, time will be out because they have no more timeouts remaining. Yeah, at this point, you're really just kind of looking for a bobbled snap or a fumble or something of that nature, some fluky thing. Um, but you never know college football, it, it can happen, anything. I mean, I mean you never know, it's yeah. the whole life. Life is a whole Life's like a of box of chocolates, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, 40 second seconds, set 47 seconds to go. Marshall's got a third and nine at their 30s, at Miami's 37, Green's gonna take the snap. Luckily, like most likely to be a handoff, it's gonna be a rollout, Green's gonna, Roll out and go down in the backfield and get taken down at the numbers. And that's going to end the game. He took enough time to end the game there as the game clock is at 30 seconds. And the play clock is at 40. So that's going to end it here as Miami's going to fall 35 to 28 to the Marshall Thundering Herd. Miami's gonna drop to 0-1 on the season, and Marshall is gonna go to 1-0 on the season in this non-conference battle between two familiar foes. Um, Marshall has won the last five of these meetings between the two, and 
keep on trying to inch their way back to the season series, the all-time series, as Miami's got quite a lead. But uh, Marshall's had a lot of success early, or, uh, as of late in this uh, rivalry, and rightfully so. These fans are going to leave happy and, and, and enjoy Ohio for the night, I guess, I believe, or, or drive back. But other than that, I think there's some positives for Miami going into next week's game against Cincinnati, which will be another tough opponent with Luke Fickle. Um, a Luke Fickle coach team that's very disciplined and has not lost to Miami in quite some time. So there's some positives, a lot of negatives, probably more negatives for Miami going into next week. Definitely have to clean up the penalty situation. You got to be able to get some stops on defense when you need them. And but there's also some bright spots. They, they, they've shown that they have explosiveness on offense and get, have the ability to get down the field very, very quickly and easily, but just not enough as they really couldn't get going until late into the game, um, which is kind of the opposite of last year because last year they would get off to all these great starts and get out to leads and leading at halftime and just stall out in, later, in the later quarters. Um, so definitely a reversal of roles here and in and, and a pretty even 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 battle stats wise here. So um, the final stat lines are 24 first downs to Miami's 18, Marshall at 24. The receiving yards are just about even. Miami actually outgained uh, Marshall in receiving yards 294 to 272, um, passing I'm sorry. Uh, rushing yards, uh, Marshall has the upper hand with 171 to 87. And the turnover battle was won by Marshall as well as Miami turned it over and downs a couple times. So other than that, no interceptions in the game and, and one fumble but it was covered by Miami. But the penalties are a big storyline and, and – and even know that Marshall really caught up to Miami with, with seven penalties. Miami ended up with eight. Um, it's, just a, it's a tough loss for Miami. It's going to be a tough pill to swallow, but they got to pick themselves up um, going into next week. I mean, just watching the game, I don't think there's a lot that um, Miami fans can kind of keep their head low about, especially in the second half. We saw how kind of smooth their offense really could be when they really got it going. I just feel like uh, Gus Raglan was under a lot of duress. Uh, I felt like the offensive line wasn't doing a greater job, and it could be the defensive matchup as well. Uh, it seemed like Marshall's team was very athletic compared to Miami. Uh, so when you're rushed like that, um, you're going to get outcomes like we had today. But I feel like the offense at times when it was really clicking, especially like that five-play drive they had for a touchdown, they, play, they played pretty well. Defense wasn't up to the task first half, but second half they did a lot better. Um, I feel like uh, if you look at the halves, Miami definitely won second half defensively. Um, so um, it's a tale of halves, but Miami loses by a touchdown, but nothing to look down upon. Uh, they got to play Cincinnati next week, and that will be a, a different story. Yeah, hopefully. And it was pretty evil. I'm looking at, looking at the time of possession. Marshall inched Miami out 31 to Miami's 28 minutes of, of time of possession, which is a little bit surprising how fast Marshall moves, but they did have the ball a lot. Uh, scoring quick and getting off the field on defense and getting the ball back. But the uh, story of the night is just Miami's defense not be able to 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 keep up with the, the offense of Marshall and their explosiveness and the offense a little bit sluggish to start. And, and you could attribute that to the long rain delay or the rustiness of going in the season. But the other team, the Mar Marshall, had to deal with the same thing and they're playing on the same um, – same field, same turf. Uh, the fans are about 50-50, so there really wasn't much of a home field advantage at all. So it was just pretty evenly uh, planning field here. And uh, just disappointing for the Red Hawks to uh, not get out to the start they were hoping for as uh, it looks to be a, a pretty promising season as Miami's up there um, in the preseason um, rankings in the MAC East looking to uh, try to get to Detroit in the MAC championship and get to a, a bowl game, uh, something they haven't done in the last – Last year, last year, that's something they did not do last year. They did got to the bowl game against um, 
against Mississippi State um, two years ago after losing their first seven games, reeled off six wins and got to the bowl game. But uh, just just a, a things that you can take away from both sides, but I would say more negative. But the team absolutely did not give up at all, and they kept their head up and kept their head down and kept fighting, and uh, you just really had a chance to play their, their last possession. It's something you, you, you always kind of want to ask, like you always – wish to ask for is to, to have the ball in your hands late into the game to either tie it or win the game. So, and they, and then they had that opportunity, even know how poorly they played in the first two, two and a half quarters. So that's going to wrap it up for us. Um, 35, 28 Marshall is victorious over Miami university and the Red Hawks and coach Martin's going to uh, regret the, the I think maybe regret a little bit of the game planning. I mean, it was also a tough for Miami not to know the quarterback situation, two different type of quarterbacks, and and you got to give your hats off to um, to Green uh, playing his first collegiate game and really really uh, shining and had a really good game. And he just, the future is bright for him in Marshall football if he's going to be at the helm for a couple more years. So. If you don't have any more closing thoughts, we will uh, wrap it up and we will see you next week. But um, I'm Kenny Schrellinger for Hans Justy. Um, we're going to wrap it up and we'll see you next week. We'll have an 8 o'clock kick from Paul Brown Stadium against University of Cincinnati. I uh, hope everybody has a great Saturday night. Lots more college football going on this weekend and, and next week. And we will see you. Thanks for tuning in for with us and listening to us and support us by subscribing and tuning in every week as we'll have coverage for Miami football throughout the season and Miami basketball when that kicks off starting, when that starts. So thank you from everybody. And uh, unless you have anything else, Hans, you're good? Oh, uh, no, I'm good. Just uh, let's get ready for UC. Absolutely. It should be fun. We'll see you next week, 8 o'clock from Paul Brown Stadium. This is Red Hawk Radio. Everybody have a great night.